Welcome everybody in to the Grand Boot Hill Weekend. This is the third leg of our broadcast. I'm Mike Flanagan from Storm Bowling Products, along with InsideBowling.com, along with Matt Turek here. It's the Grand Boot Hill Weekend, and it is the very first qualifying squad for the main event. This pamphlet right here, you may have seen it, $15,000 guaranteed for first place in the Grand Boot Hill. 8000 for second. 4000 for third, all guaranteed prizes. This tournament's been going on since 1988. And this bowling center we're in, beautiful Stardust Bowl, is, is a great facility that's been hosting the tournament the last couple of years. And what's going to happen here is we have 21 bowlers bowling on this squad. This is the first qualifier, Matt. It is. <coughs> and what's going to happen is they're all going to bowl three games. We're going to cut the field in half, which is going to be down to... 11. I think 10, he said. Did you say 10? 10, and th 5. And then 5, and then, then 3. Then when the 5, they're going to bowl three games now, then two games in the next round, then one in the next. Yeah. And the top three will make it to the finals that you'll see tomorrow night right here with us uh, beginning at about 5.30. Two more qualifying squads tomorrow. And then tonight we have the trio tournament, which is uh, guaranteed to be a hoot like it is every year. We're going to go ahead and take you out to the lanes now, and we'll get you up to speed on what's going on. Let's head over to lanes 13 and 14 and lanes 17 and 18. Lanes 13 and 14, we see Adam Barta there. Adam came in late last night with his son, Logan, and they are here having some fun. Yeah, I'm glad to see Adam out here. And they are here uh, to get it done. Adam's got his eye on the prize. He's got a new pool he wants to pay for. And over on lanes 17 and 18, couple of young ladies over there. Got Deandra Asbady. On that pair, Deandra. And Jackie Carbonetto. Jackie's been Knocking on the door in just about every event. The last event that we had, she uh, she finished it at minus 11, I believe it was. She's been right around par this weekend on very demanding lane conditions. The bowlers bowled um, in a separate event Friday night, 47-foot pattern, and then bowled this morning on a 35-foot pattern. And now today, uh, it's a 39-foot pattern. Uh, we are seeing the bowling ball make more of a left-hand turn on this pattern than we've seen on any of the other two. Yeah, and it's actually four feet longer than the pattern they bowled on this morning where there was severe out-of-bounds. I think those back ends were a little bit cleaner for this oil than it was this morning coming off of the 47-foot pattern, gutter to gutter. So um, everything checked out fine. There were no issues, but uh, everybody bowled on the same thing this morning, and it was... Jeff Fair, who came out on top. If you want to read about it, we wrote a story. We put it on the homepage at InsideBowling.com. It's also available on all of our social media. So we're going to see the players bowl three games, Matt Turek. And, and then, then the cut. Then the cut in half. And then they drop pins, and then two more, and then one. So right now I'm going to go out on a limb, and I am going to predict who I believe is going to um, definitely advance and be part of our top three today. And I am going to pick... Jim Pensack. He is my selection. Jim Pensack is my guy. And I'm going to go out, and I like this uh, this young man here, Chapman. A.J. Chapman. A.J. Chapman. So that's our picks. Jim Pensack is down on lanes five and six. They'll be moving to the right as they go along. So we will get a chance to see probably everybody over the course of these three games. Pretty close to it. Seven pairs in play, 21 bowlers. And we're going to watch them bowl a three-game set here, just like regular league play. And your man Chapman has got a strike up on the board. I like them plaid pants he's got. Yeah, that's, that's becoming more of a common trend here in our great game of bowling and our fashion world of bowling. Lefties towing says the top three are going to be Jim Pensack, Liz Johnson, and Adam Barda. Oh, Barda Nation. <laughs> 
Game one of three underway here before the first cut. They're going to cut in half. I'm expecting scores to be uh, higher this set than uh, previous events. Mike, what do you, uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, I would say so. I, I mean, the ball's definitely tipping down lane. Uh, I'm a little surprised that I don't see Rob... Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, really. I I don't know if he uh, typically qualifies on Sunday only or what he does, but he is the two-time defending champion of, of this event. And this is uh this is a you know, a different format. You know, it's not your traditional bowl qualifying pins carry over round robin match play. This is a uh, hey, keep your game face on the whole time because you yeah. can't ever let up. Pins do not carry over in this event. So uh, it's round by round yep. by round. You got a bowl good all day. We're pretty much all weekend. Yeah, and in the early rounds, you got a bowl safe. Yeah. You know, you don't want to take any risks. You're just trying to make it in the top half. Uh -huh. But then as people get eliminated, it gets harder and harder and harder. And Adam Barta is throwing the ball harder and harder and harder. And that he's ball not had able no to get reaction at yeah, all. Yeah, no, he's not happy with that ball reaction. Nor should he be. I just got a text from the Marvel S saying that uh, the Marvel S and the High Road are on their way and they should be here by about the second game. They've been listening to the broadcast today and they've been looking forward to a very special interview here today. Timmy Mack is in this grouping. He is out there participating today. He says the, the leg hurts a little bit, but he is uh, out here to compete. Couldn't make it out this morning. But he is here and ready to bowl. He threw the ball extremely well last night. Uh, just couldn't quite knock them all down. Left a four pin and a nine pin uh, in that match against Liz Johnson. You really see the high rev players are playing more of the inside of the lane. Yeah, they're going to play a little fallback, give it a chance to tip over. It seems like if you play the, the angles a little too tight with too much speed, it's uh, 210, 2810. Yeah, wash out. Miss the head pin to the right. So it looks like the, the lanes have actually gotten a little bit slicker. I think this is where a high-performance bowling ball in your hand would uh, would really benefit you if you if you need if you need a little extra hook if you if you're a player that needs that your ball speed might be a little high you need you need a, a more aggressive bowling ball in your hand if you're a little softer with touch you want to blend the pattern out a little bit then something with a little surface a little more mid mid range maybe symmetrical core. Brian, how's our YouTube looking? Is YouTube up and running? If you're uh, if you're if you're joining us and you want to watch any pair you want out of the three that we have cameraed up, um, refresh your entire browser screen, and down below on the right, you'll see our YouTube channel, and you can pick which pair you want to watch, and you get the same commentary throughout. So uh, enjoy that. New feature here.
I'm updating my Facebook page as we speak because it is a pretty cool feature to be able to show that. So there we go. I want to thank everybody for being with us all day. We're, uh, the viewership has come back up again here. And uh, this, is, uh, this is like a marathon weekend for us, Matt Turek. It we, really with is. With all these events. We, I mean, last night, nothing can top that step ladder from last night, but just when you think nothing can, you know, this amount of money that we're going to give away tomorrow. Anything these, can happen. These guys are qualifying for right now. Oh. When you say anything can happen, you know, there's a great new song out called Anything Can Happen. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Who's that by? Oh boy, I forget who it's by, but it's uh, it's kind of a girly song. Though. Oh. It's like anything can happen, anything can happen, and it's like. You know, you know, the casting director from The Voice is not here. Oh yeah, it's a catchy <laughs> tune. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, Lane Ten, we did have a Greek church pickup. Missed that as I was singing and looking through this pamphlet. Auditioning. I was. <laughs> I watch all those reality shows. Yeah, you are a big fan of that. I I try to watch American Idol, but... This year was rough. I don't get very far. <laughs> Spigners are in the house. Barb and Bill. Go back over to the girls pair. Looks like Deander's throwing the uh, IQ Tour Pearl. Yep, the gold ball. Butterscotch. Smells like Werther's original. Mm. Her and Jackie over there are grinding it out with the boys. Man, Chapman, my pick here, started off strong with a nice looking strike, but Sense has gone to open, open, open. It's not looking good, but anything can happen, especially after uh, Adam's 130 game last. That's right, and if you keep saying that, I'm going to keep singing the song. All right, go ahead. No, I don't mind. Maybe I'll learn it. <laughs> we can sing it together. Yeah, we could we could arrange for that. Ellie Golding, apparently, is who it that song is. It is. It is Eli Golding. Yes, it is. We just need to know whether or not you like that song. That's what we really want to know, is if anybody in the chat even likes it. I must have sang it good enough that that people know that song. So they recognized my version. Yeah. Tell you, I couldn't tell the difference. No. I thought you were playing it off of uh, iTunes there. I feel like sometimes we need some music playing while we're commentating <laughs> just to keep our keep ourselves going. So early on, game number one, Grand Boot Hill, it's the qualifier. It's the first one of three, really, and they're bowling three games in this elimination round. They're going to cut the field down to ten bowlers. Ten bowlers. So let's see. What do you think? About 550 is going to make it through? 550? Yeah, probably. Um, That's my guess. I'm going to go out and say I'm going to go higher than that. Okay. I'm going to go 610. Oh, for the first cut. Yeah. Yeah. I'll stick with 610. Okay. That's pretty high. That is high. I, re I just realized that. It's really high, actually. I'm going to win this one. What do you <laughs> think in the chat, everybody? <laughs> Here in the chat, they say I should try out for American Idol. I could be the next William Hung. William Hung. <laughs> Talk to me. Yeah. Tell me your name. 
I'm switching sides like a Gemini. Answer your question there. I believe Shibang, there Shibang. is 20 teams tonight for the trio. That's unofficial. Ooh, baby, yeah, she moves, she moves. I go crazy because <laughs> she looks like a... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. No problem. You just you have the request. We're opening up the request lines right now yeah. in the chat. Put up whatever you want in the chat. Mike will sing it to completion. If you ask him nice, we might turn this camera around. He might do the dance for whatever song. Oh, yeah. I have no professional training. We've got some um, some viewers are, are putting out their predictions. 575. I see another 610. Unless he's just making fun of me. Uh, minus 35. <laughs> uh, <yeah, laughs> <great>. My <laughs> time of cow. Uh, Frank Sinatra. Well, it just goes to show how good I am at commentating bowling. I've never had anybody say, stop talking. <laughs> stop singing, I can deal with it. There you see Adam Bardo on the left-hand side, leaving a two. It's almost like we've gotten to the point now with live streaming where, like, I don't even really know what to tell you about at home right now because, like, you can see the scores for yourself. Yeah, really so, well. So we don't need to tell yeah. anybody what the scores are. They're right there for you. Um, we've commentated. Um, I mean, we could talk. We talked about cereal this morning. Mm -hmm. We could talk about jerseys. Yeah, we could talk about jerseys. DeAndra's always got some very creative jerseys. Yeah, that jerseys. is cool. I like how it's incorporated her name into, like, the line that goes down below it, too, like it's an underline. Oh, she picks up the 4-7. Wow. That's cool. Nice spare. The 4-7. Four 4-10. Four okay. I was going to say, <laughs> that's pretty, pretty routine. Yeah. My ears are hurting. Woody, we got some questions over here in the chat. How many entries 39 and under and how many 40 and up? They don't have that division this year. Spares, good. Okay. The next question we have, how many teams do you have for tonight? Around 20. Okay. And... Um, I think we're good. What did you eat for breakfast? You, you cut to 11 or 10? 10. And then, and then three get the 400. And entry for this was 250? 400, okay. Okay. And then we have one final question for you. They want to know when you're getting a haircut. He just got one. It looks good, actually. All right. I think we're good, then. Thank you, Woody. Yeah, he's happy to have hair, and he's 70 years old. There are uh, 21 bowlers in this squad. 21. Going to cut to 10. 550 is going to make it. I'm telling you that right now. All right. That was kind of loud. <laughs> Got some broadcasts coming up here in the future. We got the Proprietors Cup will be coming up in July. We've also got we'll be streaming from Bowl Expo in the Storm Booth. That'll be towards the end of June, just around the corner, actually. And then uh, we will also be streaming uh, the the TAT, the True Amateur Tournament, out in Las Vegas. Brad Edelman's event. We'll be out there streaming for about a week. That would be uh, pretty fun. And we just announced recently that we're doing the Lucy Bonneau doubles down in Houston, Texas, down at Connor's event. And that's going to be fun as well. So, and, uh, Now we have a request for karaoke. And 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pleasantly decline. I think it might just be time for me to... Uh, ooh, I'll tell you what we need to do. I got an idea here. I'll be right I back. I see your gears turning already. I think I know. are starting to finish up game number one here. Take you around the horn. Down here to uh, nine and ten. See a little string there on uh, letter B. Which I believe, no, never mind. Down here to 13 and 14. We have Adam Barda getting ready to bowl. Send you down to 17 and 18, where the ladies are. Okay, Matt. Here with you, bud. I'm out roaming around. It's what you do best. Rob Gotchel said he was going to join us in the booth in just a little bit. That'll be quite a treat. Excuse me. What's your last name, ma'am? Spigner. So I had it right from the get-go. Spigner is correct, yes. Yeah. However they pronounce your name, if they're still saying it, it's a good thing. It's true. Last night we debated it. I, I said uh, I said Spigner, and I was, I, I was corrected. And then I was told that I've been told both ways. And I said, Spigner's got to be. I, I thought it was right. And then old Barb here, my, uh, my Facebook junkie friend, she is a, a Facebook-aholic just like me. We are recovering. We're in a 12, is it a 12-step program? Yeah. Yeah, we're in a 12-step program. We, uh, we, we made it through. And, um, yeah, so we're good now. So it is Spigner. I will never mess that up again. Wow, that's a great story. I just got down here. Matt, did you overhear any of that? I was trying, but I couldn't get her at all. Okay, so here's what it was. So um, Bill Spigner, Barb's husband, USBC Hall of Famer, Bill Spigner, PBA Tour competitor, 
going a little old school on us here. Uh, but when uh, he made TV, everybody on tour called him Spigner. That was his bowling name, but the family name is Spigner. And uh, so anyway, so, so Spigner is, is the correct enunciation. So he told Chris Schenkel, I want you to call me Spigner. And on the entire telecast, Chris Schenkel said Spigner. Oh, really? Got it right. This just goes to show what kind of professional Chris Schenkel was. Hi, Bill. How you doing, buddy? Good. Are you ready for some broadcasting tomorrow? Interesting. Looking forward to it. We've got some history of this tournament. I've been around it for a long time. Never bowled in it, though, and everybody always asks me, are you bowling? I said, no, no, it's beyond my capabilities these days. That's great, man. Yeah, well, we're happy to have you around. I'm looking forward to working with you. Have you met Matt over here? Matt, hey, Bill yeah. Spiker. Nice to meet you. And you know Brian? Do you see what he did? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Nobody knew it. There was no excitement down there. There was no cheering and yelling and stuff. Of course, it was 2 in the morning, too. You know, it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how Brian is. He flies under the radar. He's incognito. Yeah, that's how he likes it. But, yeah, is that unbelievable, though? He, he bowls. Uh, I don't know. They shoot 1440. Unbelievable. That's a ton. Okay, so let's get an expert opinion here, okay? Brian Burkhardt is here. He is in the clubhouse as the USBC 2013 doubles leaders with about a month and a half to go here. We have legendary expert analysis, or analyst, I guess I would say, Bill Spigner. Bill, do you believe Brian Burkhardt's score is going to hold up this year? Well, I thought that 14-22 was going to hold up. It was going to be a tough number to beat because most people come in there and bowl in the doubles, and they're really not sure where they're going to play. And when you get a group of guys together to play them right, it, it could open up. But we had a good shot, but we didn't bowl that good. Uh, so I think it's it's doable, but it's a stretch. I think I wouldn't jinx them saying it won't hold up. It, it will hold up, but I think it's got a good chance. So right now, if you had to lay odds on it, 50-50 bet. Would you put your money on it holding up or not holding up? I put it on it holding up. <laughs> ah, that's the that's what Brian wanted to hear. That's the green light. You heard it here first from a very reputable source. If it doesn't hold up, Brian, don't don't get mad at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> this guy can steal people's credit card numbers out of their <laughs> pocket. He will send refrigerators to your house. Are <laughs> charged on your credit card if this doesn't come in correct. So I would start praying, Bill. <laughs> uh, of course, of course, we're kidding. Uh, not really, but yeah, we are. <laughs> we're not kidding, but he would never do that. Yeah, so it's uh, it's really it's really a love affair here, Shy Town. Tomorrow, uh, Natalie from Natalie's. Striking Summer is going to be stopping by to throw some bowling balls as well. She's going to throw some, some bowling balls in Illinois. She'll be stopping in. She's eight years old, and she wants to throw a bowling ball in every state in the lower 48 of the United States this summer. That's her plan and her goal, and she's going to stop by and see us tomorrow. I think so that's I've really neat. Told, yeah. You know, getting around like that and trying to raise some. Is she, she were doing it for a charity or anything, or is it? You don't know? Um, I think she's just doing it to bring awareness to bowling. I think she's trying to raise some scholarship money while she's out for youth youth tournaments. That's good. You can check her out on Facebook. Natalie Striking Summer. So what do our scores look like around the horn here? 207, 209, 158, 207, 195, 158. Pretty similar scores here. Yeah, all right around 180 to 215. Maybe 220. your 610 looks decent. I hope so. Jim Pensack is on lanes 9 and 10 this game.
Adam Barta has moved to, I believe, 17 and 18. So he will be on our featured pair to the right. Yeah, he is. You can see him there. Barta that throws a strike. He's fixing a divot or something up on the lanes. Got a comment in the chat. They want to see Adam Barta on Storm Nation. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he's pretty happy where he's at right now. We'd love to have Adam, but uh, folks he's with, he, he really enjoys and, and has a good relationship. So Adam is on Hammer Staff. Matt, can you give me a 9 and 10, 17 and 18 split screen, please? Yeah. I would just use an existing one. Oh, really? Oh, I already. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> so I want to look at the style of Jim Pensack. He's down on 9 and 10. All right, you're up. He's gone open, open to start. <laughs> Tim Mack over on lane 12 is up to 157. Whoops. Kent's got a good look on this. Lane 11. DeAndre's up on 8, looking for a double. 2 8 10. Here's a look at Jimmy Pensack opening up the lane a little bit. Is he going to roll it? Yes, he does. That's a score correction. Got to get somebody for that? I'm not sure. Or they just do it themselves. I think they take care of it. Yeah. I think if somebody went around changing their scores on their own, I think somebody would uh, definitely I notice. Give them the old clobber. Yeah, or say something. Give them the old right hook. Nice uh, roll of the 10 pin there, buddy. 
Here you got a, a question and comment in the chat here, Mike. Since each of you have a target cut score, then the one that comes closest gets to choose someone from the chat room to get an inside bowling branded gift. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So that's branded gift. Uh, there's no Alex Aguiar in the building the squad. It's kind of a light squad here, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, it is, but there's still big names in it. Yeah, we're going to advance three. We got a real special couple of interviews coming up here in just a few minutes, too. You do not want to go anywhere. No, you don't. We do want to thank everybody for joining us. This is the Storm Grand Food Hill Weekend. And you've been listening to Mike Flanagan and Matt Turek here on the call. I want to thank all of our viewers that we've had thus far. If you were here last night, you really missed a heck of a step ladder. Yeah, you, you sure weren't here did. this morning. You, uh, you missed a great sweeper. But we'll be back with, with more of that for sure. On our YouTube channel, you'll be able to watch it again. We'll have those archived probably about Tuesday of the next week. And then we will continue to bring you this event. And tonight, the trios. I'm looking forward to watching some team competition tonight. I need some team competition. Yeah? I do. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's I think us exciting. three should chew up and just go commentary Let's go. free. Let's go. And bid on ourselves in Calcutta <laughs> and throw house balls. Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> throw house balls. I like the house ball idea. Get some, <laughs> some rental <laughs> shoes. It doesn't matter to Brian. Brian's a USBC He's Eagle over winner. Here. He's over future, here shaking his head. He's a future Eagle yeah. winner. <laughs> <laughs> He's over here just shaking his head. Yep. Yeah. Like, bring it on. Let's Alex go. Aguiar is, like, outside, like, putting, like, holes in the tires of the car, <laughs> considering they had <laughs> they had the lead until old B-squared walked into town. Take that. Double A. I'm double B. <laughs> <laughs> you better hope somebody doesn't come along named, like, Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> they're gonna that would be really uh, messed up. <laughs> yeah, you know, double like C, a, B, B, and then C, C. Charlie Jeff. Yeah, you better hope nobody in the tournament's named Zeke Zebra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's right. I've been studying all week. I've been trying to get that one out. Glad you were able to work that in. I kind of like this corner seat. I bet. There's a fly flying around here. Yeah, usually flies fly, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Scores are low, but that's how it goes when you're bowling on tougher lane patterns. This is 39 feet if you're just joining us. 26 milliliters. So if you're just joining us, you can pick which camera you want to watch. You can watch whatever pair you want. In the bottom right, you'll see uh, just below, just to the right of our uh, Twitter feed, you will see that you can watch any camera you want from uh, our YouTube channel. You can also tweet us with hashtag Inside Bowling. Aaron Lawrence is not bowling this squad. He will be here, I'm sure, tomorrow.
right now you're watching split screen coverage of lanes 9, 10, and 17 and 18. We have Brett Cunningham on 9 and 10, Adam Barda on 17 and 18 there. Jim Pensack keeps running back and forth to his bowling ball bags. Yeah, that's not good. Had a double. I don't know what happened. He went open, open, double, nine spare. Now he's grabbing another rock. Now he's got an IQ tour in his hand. That's been a magic ball this weekend. It has been. A lot of people have been throwing that and scoring. Uh, we don't know if he's bowling trio or not. Uh, we don't have a list of teams or anything yet. Uh, once we find that out, though, we'll get that to you. I'll tell you something kind of cool. Bill and, and Barb Spigner. Bill and Barb Spigner are like the cutest uh, older couple you've ever met in your life. They, are, they have their iPads out down here on the concourse. They're connected to Wi-Fi. And they're taking pictures and video recording people bowl. You got to really hand it to them. I'm going to get a picture of them taking pictures. <laughs> yeah, that's like a little thing back in St. Louis that we do. Get a picture. You got to get a video of the guy taking video of the guy taking video of the guy shooting 300. I'm going to get them right here. And all of it goes on Facebook. I should take a picture of Mike. Taking a picture of them. He's probably down here taking video so he can coach these people. That's what he's doing. He's taking video of the bowlers so he can send them a, a like a two minute analysis of their game. And then say, I can help you. There you go, I got it. I'll post that on social media a little bit later. We got a lot of Jim Pensack fans in the chat. You'd probably never heard of that guy before, have you, Matt? No, no. The guy's a legend. The guy is an absolute legend. He uh, he made some telecasts. I don't remember if he won a title or not. I don't remember. They might know in the chat. But Jimmy Pensack is the man. Don't let him tell you otherwise. Unbelievable. Unbelievable USBC Open Championships average and, and records. some life to this broadcast now. He's the two-time defending champion of the Grand Boot Hill weekend, the main event. Two different bowling centers, two different years. He's looking to three-peat this year. He's our friend. The last time he was in our live booth, I believe we read his palm, and you can <laughs> see this video out on YouTube. <laughs> it's none other than white belt Rob Gotchel. Hi, Rob. Hi, Mike. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well, buddy. I am doing well good to hear it's good to see you again it is good to see you i think babyface sings a song when will i see you again <laughs> it's a very hey, romantic will you, will you song sing it for us we had karaoke going earlier it's who was like, singing uh, karaoke uh mike it was like uh, mike in the chat the nights are lonely <laughs> since you've been away yeah that's it I've and returned. I, I've returned to Flannyland. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. I've been riding it all weekend, <laughs> and nobody knows it. 
by me. I think that's how it goes. Uh, that's exactly how it goes. Rob, how are you, buddy? Last night, second in the Friday night sweeper. Yeah, it, it was a good night. I, I, I did, did what I said I was going to do and keep the ball in play, try to bowl 200 every game, and I did. Bowl the big game in the final and uh, was just one pin short of Jeffrey. I interviewed you before every match. You told me the same thing. Yeah, I, I this tournament, it, it's special to me. I've been coming here since I was about 20 years old, and uh, I've taken my lumps just like everybody else has taken lumps. And, you know, it, it, it just takes a different mindset to, to bowl on Woody's stuff, and you, you can't try to strike. You have to let the strikes come and literally just try to leave something you can make and you know when your swing gets loose the, the strikes will start to come and your scores will increase but you can't get down on yourself here you, you have to just you know go with the flow there's going to be some patterns you hit and some patterns you don't yep yeah there's no doubt about that you've been coming here for for many years supporting this event and as you've told me before, Woody just gives the money away. Yeah. And I don't understand why more people don't come here. Yeah. I, I mean, I wish everybody would experience it. It. Woody is the is. I mean, there's other people out there, but Woody really does it for the bowler. I mean, he guarantees the money regardless. I mean, we bowled a sweeper here last September, or October, and he guaranteed like ten thousand dollars in prize money and 15 people showed up for five thousand for first wow it's uh, you know i mean the patterns are hard they're real hard and they can they can beat you down physically mentally but you know what if you just practice shoot your spares and you know y you can be in the hunt here you don't you don't have to average 230 240 and i just don't see why people want to you know bowl on the strike a thon every week Yeah, well, we're happy to be here covering this event. You know, I, I think it's time that everybody uh, becomes familiar with what this event is. We've got a terrific bowling center here in Stardust Bowl. It's it's a beautiful 84-lane uh, facility, newly remodeled, new lanes, uh, new beautiful hardwood in the bowlers area, new carpet. It's a gorgeous facility. Yeah, I believe I believe they said they spent somewhere like a million dollars. It was a few years ago. They spent a million dollars remodeling this place. And I bowled a world team challenge. Oh, probably some six, 15, 16 years ago here when it was old wood beat up. Yeah. Looked like your average everyday Brunswick center. Now, do they have all 84 lanes at that time? Too? Yes. Wow. Yeah. And it was full. The team challenge wow. was full. 80, there was so many brackets, and, and that's when there was 10 and $15 oh, brackets. Yeah. and. Team money. Team brackets were a hundred dollars a a whack. Holy cow. Five five man team. Yeah. But no, place looks great. They do a great job. Yeah, I took a walk to the ATM down there. It's down behind lane like sixty eight. Yeah. I was out of breath by the time I got yep. there. Needed a water. Yeah, the majority of the open play. I, I believe the high side of the center gets most of the the play throughout the year is they have two different front desks here so okay the the high and there's a whole separate bar down there yeah, too i don't I know, know if you saw, saw that. that yeah yeah well that that one that they got in there is a really nice bar they got a nice stage you got yeah. a dance floor they got a whole back end section yep. huge projection screen yeah, tv yep. yeah that place is going to be hopping tonight for that blackhawks game oh oh yeah and the calcutta that's where yeah. i believe that's where they're hosting the oh, calcutta okay. oh, cool. really? in the bar Rob, uh, you're obviously a member of Storm staff, and, and Storm's been great to you. And Storm this year has been great to this tournament and has sponsored this event. It's cool to have, you know, your company, my company now as well, you know, part of this event. Yeah, it's a great deal. I, I, I was really happy for Woody that he finally got Ball Company to to jump on board and, and, and get behind it. And it was funny as we were practicing last night obviously the pattern played like it was 120 feet long <laughs> we were looking on the ball returns and i mean 85 percent of the the balls on the ball rack were came out of the utah plant and i mean that's a good thing for for you for me for, for our, the company in general and you know just right now it shows where where the competitive bowlers 
feel the best equipment is. So, you know, I'm glad to be part of it. And at the same time, I'm glad to have them in my hand. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, speaking of which, Rob, um, I, I don't know if you saw on our Facebook page, but we announced uh, and had ran a contest earlier this week that we were going to have two very special guests, uh, secret guests as part of our broadcast this weekend. And people were guessing Randy Peterson and Pete Weber and Jason Belmonte and DeAndre Asbady and all these, all these uh, you know, great bowlers. But we were able to go out and we were able to uh, solidify two other great guests that have never, ever been interviewed before. They may never be interviewed again. They may not. <laughs> I mean, to they, be honest with you. They really may not. This might and, be their uh, 15 minutes. They just got here with their bodyguards and their entourage. And the limo dropped them off. Two limos, actually, one for each guest. It, it was actually it was a it was a cavalcade, <laughs> uh, and well, it was you know you had to you, it was yeah. a guest to see which one was yeah. in what. Well, they like had a decoy come right, by first. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. So, so with no further ado, uh, looks like they've hopped right up into the into the uh, mix here. Um, here up in the booth, made himself comfortable. Um, Rob, feel free to ask any questions that you want, but uh, we're pleased to announce our first special guest here today. It's the uh, the Marvel S joins us. Ah. Welcome to the booth, Marvel S. Get your yeah, hands it's off me. <laughs> <laughs> Get your hands off me right now. <laughs> Holy cow. Um, Marvel S, I'll start with the first question. Um, I just wanted to know, um, do you really have that deep of a voice? You see, <laughs> out at the plant, uh, they, they pick these voices for us. And uh, I cut through the oil quite a bit. And uh, they wanted to give me one of the more deeper voices out there that's available. So uh, I'm really excited to be part of the Storm family. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know how long this interview is going to last, but yeah, uh, but it's a beautiful bowling ball. Um, you are one of the greatest bowling balls uh, that we've seen. You've got the great Marvel core inside of it, the second most winningest core of, of all time out on tour. Yeah, I'm actually kind of pissed about that. <laughs> uh, I wrote a great, great member of the family, but uh, if the guys would have performed a little better out on tour with our core, uh, I think we'd have more wins. That that's part of the reason why I've been designed to go out on tour. Okay, well, anyway, you've got a great core in you and uh, got a great cover stock with that nanotechnology. Um, and we're really happy to see you hit the market here uh, next month. Uh, Rob, Matt, you guys have any questions for the, for the Marvel S as he joins us here in the yeah, booth? I, I got a question for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, do you, what, what do you use to smell so good? Well... <laughs> Back in the day, my mom and dad they used to uh, they used to make sure that I always had, you know, deodorant and uh, plenty of bars of soap. And we used to go to bed Body Works a lot too. But uh, really, that's uh, that's Mr. Grisman. He takes the time to uh, make sure all of us smell really good. And uh, I'm really excited about my new spearmint smell. I can tell you that on the way here. I had about seven women throw themselves at me. <laughs> That's why they sent the decoy in, isn't it? Well, don't tell the high road pearl this at all, but uh, I smell a lot better than the high road pearl. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll let the fans be the judge of that. Although you do smell pretty good, Marvel. Thank you very much, Matt. Sitting next to you is uh, very enjoyable. <laughs> Rob, I have a question for you. Yes, Marvel S. I was wondering, uh, are you going to have me in your hand? <laughs> are you going to have me in your hand? Absolutely. I, I mean, I... I when? I, when? Uh, Tell me, Rob. When? Uh, hopefully as soon as I get home. Oh, uh, okay. I'm probably going to take this one you right here <laughs> you. and just, you know, <laughs> this is put insane. it in my car. <laughs> I, I, I am Take it home, put it in the bed. Yeah. Put it on the nightstand. I don't even know what to say about this conversation. I, right now. Rob, Rob, <laughs> I want to be in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I want to put holes in you. <laughs> okay. And then put his fingers. Yeah. Uh -huh. In your holes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man. <laughs> well, guys. Yeah, so it's the all new uh, Marvel S uh, with a deep voice joining us here in the booth. The Marvel S will be coming out uh, the second week of July, I believe it is. Uh, it's been pushed back a little bit due to uh, so many production. Uh, so many produ uh, behind on production with all the other great equipment that uh, Storm and Rotogrip have. But uh, these balls will be out before the uh, league season. And uh, we want to thank the Marvel S for coming by and joining us here in the booth. Thank you very much, Marvel S. Thanks, Marvel. Yes, thanks, Marvel. Oh, you're welcome, guys. <laughs> Anytime. I'm going to go in the bar. I'm going to kick back, have a couple of beers, and uh, get ready for this Blackhawks game tonight. Smoke a few more cigarettes. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> All right, so that's uh, that's the Marvel S joining us. All right, and uh, we'll see if we can get together. Marvel S is really good friend, the High Road, as we uh, continue to cover this tournament. Um, Deandra Asbady uh, is on a feature pair here. What are our feature pairs? Actually, no, she's just to the left of the feature pair. Nine and ten, thirteen and fourteen, and seventeen and eighteen. All right. I saw something on Facebook that you're allowing the viewer to pick the pair they want to watch. Yeah, you can do that. Um, you can pick which pair you want to watch now. Man, you're getting high tech, Mike. Yeah, that's Brian's. Uh, that's Brian's new thing that he wanted to do. Very so. nice. Yeah. So you can actually watch two feeds at one time. What a great field this weekend, Rob. Uh, not, you know, a, a ton, ton of bowlers. Still a good turnout, but quality this weekend. Holy oh, cow. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was 46 players in the sweeper last night. And, you know, it's a, it's always a good, good sign for competition-wise when you can pretty much name all 46 of them. And, you know, all 46 of them have a chance to win. I mean, it's it's a good feeling to compete against a field like this. I mean, there's, you know, you're not bowling against any slouches here at all. Definitely not. This field is very strong this whole weekend. Yeah, a lot of talent, a lot of young, old, uh, male, female. I mean, there's, there's, I think he's got more women than he's had, you know, the last few years combined and. I mean, the women that are bowling are very good. This is a great tournament for women because it's a grind out. Oh, it's not a strike fast. Yeah, absolutely. You know, lower rev rates, slower ball speed doesn't it doesn't hurt them. You know, it, it's the same thing. Everybody's trying to throw a double and make their spares. You know, Liz has obviously had mounds of success in this tournament. Deandra as well. Uh, it's good to see, you know, Jackie... Uh, Carbonetto bowling this week, you know, young talent right out of college. Very uh, solid game. Oh, real good game. Real good game. Real good mental game as well. I mean, she's staying solid. I actually heard she's moving to Chicago to uh, get her master's at Robert Morris, which is where her boyfriend, Matt Gasson, attends and just won a national championship. Got a tweet coming in. <laughs> Rob Gotchel seducing the Marvel S right now live <laughs> on Inside Bowling. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that voice is hard to do for a period of time. I used to be really good at it, but I guess I can't pull it off anymore. You just need more cigarettes. That was a bit of a train wreck. But uh, speaking of uh, speaking of train wrecks, sometimes they get out on the road, and there's a high road pearl joining us now in the booth. I'd like to welcome to the booth for the first time ever, debut interview. First time being out and about since being announced and being released. It's the High Road Pearl. How we doing, High Road Pearl? Hello? Hi. Is this thing on at all right now? <laughs> Am I on? Am I on the air? Inside Bowling TV? Hi, everyone. Welcome. Well, welcome, uh, High Road Pearl. Uh, we'll get going with the other guys. Do you guys have any questions for the High Road Pearl right out of the right out of the box here? Literally? Um, I mean, I do. I all right. Go ahead. High Road Pearl. What I mean, what is it going to be like to to follow in the footsteps of probably one of the greatest bowling balls of all time? Well, I, I'm I'm very very scared. I'm very scared. I'm scared of oil. I like friction. I'm scared of oil. I like going down the lane and hitting the friction, <laughs> making a left hand turn, getting the sparks of flying down the lane. But uh, you know. 
the, the high road was the most successful bowling ball that, that we've had in modern day history. Won more titles on tour. And Bill Chrisman sat me down and looked at me and said, please, please, high road Pearl, win more than the high road. And that's what I intend to do at every level. Every level. Those are pretty high expectations, but I like it. Well, it's the I'm the same core. I'm a little more cool. snappy down lane. My entry angle is going to be improved over the original high road. And I'm just prettier. And I smell unbelievably delightfully good. I'm the new grape punch flavor. And I will be in the pro shops on the wall. Sending my scent over to you. And please buy me. Well, if you smell anything like that Marvel, I'm going to definitely buy you and take you home. Look, if you put me in the Marvel <laughs> in the same bag... You will have everyone coming to your doorstep, handing you money. Oh. Well, then I guess uh, you're going to come home with me this weekend. We have been nicknamed the Bowler's ATM. When you put <laughs> us together, the money will just come to you. <laughs> well, all right. Do you have any more questions for me, gentlemen? I'm really getting comfortable in this booth. What, uh, what part of the country are you from? I can't quite... Uh, I can't figure out the accent. Well, I, earlier in my career, I, I used to work for the Jerky Boys. <laughs> and, and now I work for Storm. So I'm from the East Coast, but my mother was born in California, so my accent doesn't come out quite right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Got stuck in St. Louis. Yeah. Well, High Road, you uh, you do smell pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, when uh, when are you guys going to be out? Well, they keep pushing us back, but I think they've decided that we will be uh, available the second week of July. But please go over to our website, stormbowling.com, for more information about when we will be available for you to pick up and take home with you. Do not feed us after midnight, though. Please. <laughs> Please don't do it. We will not multiply. We will just hurt our cover stock. <laughs> and we will not come off the end of the pattern like we're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Uh, oh, that's great. Well, Hi Road, how was your, uh, your ride in? I hear they, they sent you your own limo this time. Well, I was brought in on a cruise ship <laughs> with Burt Reynolds from Utah. And let me <laughs> tell you something right now. Burt Reynolds, do not sit next to him on a cruise ship. He's a washed up actor <laughs> and I no longer want to sit next to that man. <laughs> but but the but the cruise was great coming in. I floated right in and it's been an enjoyable stop here in Chicago. Chicago. So, any more questions by you guys, or can I head down with Marvel S and, and, and start drinking and getting ready for this big Blackhawks game tonight? Absolutely. Yep. You're, you're more than willing to go hang with your pal and, and, you know, let everybody see you. Well, thank you guys very much for having me on. And I want to thank Mike Flanagan one more time for coming on board with Storm. We're excited to be hanging out in his office, kicking back, playing some cards. And uh, thanks for having me on this broadcast. Thanks for stopping by. Wow, guys, I couldn't even get a word in there. Yeah. I didn't even get to talk to the High Road Pearl. but uh, no, Definitely a talker, that's for sure. A couple of great products coming out. It's a lot easier to do that voice than it is the other one. So <laughs> that's why that one was a little chatty. <laughs> but anyway, uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed those interviews. Obviously, two great bowling balls coming out by Storm. In all seriousness, though, that Marvel S with that Marvel Core, second winningest of all time core, and the uh, nanotechnology on that cover. I watched Pete Weber and uh, Mike Fagan use them at the Storm video shoot that we did. Yeah. And I know these guys are really good bowlers, but I've never se seen Pete be able to take his hand out of a ball and move that far right on a house shot and still have room and then move in and just play right up the oil and back it up the oil and watch the ball still connect on the 10-pin and just tap it out over and over again. 
Yeah, still read. It definitely they def the Marvel S definitely looks like it it still reads the lane in the oil, which it, which in today's game is a very, very good thing. Yeah, and this high road pearl, you know, a lot of people have looked at the uh looked at the numbers on the high road pearl and they realize that it's very close to the old T road pearl. Yeah, that's why I'm excited about it. But the new micas and the new the new cover stocks, you know, the new materials that come into storm. Even though that ball has the same specs, it doesn't mean that it's going to roll the same, same way. Yeah, Plus, right. the color does make a difference. Whether people believe that or not, it does make a difference. Ooh, we got some scoring updates after two games. You want to do it? Yeah, let's see what we got here. Is it Alan Fem Femley? Is that how you say his name? Femley. Femley. I th I, I've been calling him Felmy. I Felmley. Don't, I don't know for sure. Alan Felmley leads at plus 48. Matt Gasson is plus two. Chris Prather is even. Everybody else in the field is minus. Oh, so much for my prediction. Fourth is Tim Mack at minus two. Fifth is Jackie Carbonetto at minus three. Randy Weiss is in the cut at minus six. Marshall Kent, minus 10. A.J. Chapman, minus 13. Liz Jonas Johnson, minus 16. Brent Bowers, minus 17. So Tight. Jeffrey Young, Brett Cunningham, Pat Del Fiaco. Paul Gibson, Adam Barta, Cliff Connors, Chad Nelson, Jim Pinsack, Sam Lanto, Daniel Jernigan, and DeAndre Asbady are all out of the cut. DeAndre's actually in last place at minus 74, believe it or not. That's surprising. She'll figure it out. Of course she will. That's what she does. My pick, Jim Pinsack, is minus 57 through two. My so right, right now, the number's minus 17. My pick to Woody... When he, he called me about two, three weeks ago, asked who a few people were that signed up that he had never heard of. And <clears throat> my my pick, <clears throat> aside from myself, you know, obviously I, I want to win, but my pick is Chris Prather to win to win the tournament. Really? Yeah. He is uh, currently going to Wichita, originally from Florida, and he has been all over the country bowling, and he finished second in the New Mexico Open. On a really hard pattern, he uh, he won on a U.S. Open condition in Grand Rapids. I've seen him bowl a few other times, and he's he is really solid. Got a good mental game. He's actually on one of our featured pairs right now. I believe he's bowling with Jeffrey Young, whichever nine and ten. Yeah, let's break down his game. Let's, I think, let's full screen 9 and 10 here. I think he's the B bowler on 9 and 10, so he'll be bowling after Sam Lanto. That's the guy in the black shirt. Yeah, right now he's messing with his accessory bag. He was staying at our uh, hotel today. Looks like yeah. Matt's down there fixing the scoreboard for us. Chris is coming up here on lane nine. You know, he was actually, uh, earlier this morning, he was able to find a way to create a little bit of angle. Yeah, he, this, this kid is really good. Really, and I mean, I call him a kid, I think he's in his mid-20s. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, real solid, solid game. Unbelievable spare game. I'm not sure he ever hits up on it. Just very clean at the bottom. And uh, he knows how to win. So, Rob, what are you up to these days? Obviously, you're out bowling. What else you doing with yourself? been doing a little work uh i own my own little small business back in nebraska at, uh, the margarita man franchise for nebraska i basically rent frozen drink machines and sell flavored concentrates rent machines to the general public bars you know for events and stuff and also sell the concentrate on the retail side as well uh you know, plus with the rentals and stuff. Uh, obviously, this is my busy season in the Midwest because it's warm out. Just went May is my busy month. Just went through May. I had to. I skipped a 
the 10 grand tournament up in Grand Rapids a couple weeks ago because it's my busiest weekend of the year and, and stuff, but I've still found time to get away. Went to Florida a couple weeks ago, Baltimore last weekend, and now we're in Chicago this weekend. Yeah, and you uh, recently have had some success in some events. Uh, you bowled really well. Uh, we'll go back to the USBC tournament where you bowled the Bowler's Journal. Shot 300 on lanes that most of us have gone to and thought were absolutely brutal. Yeah, you, we. I went in there. There was uh, our, our obviously our groups become really tight knit and stuff, and we try to do a little, little bit of research. I, I'm not one to read too much into anything that anybody's posting online or anything like that. But you know, follow a few select people that I value their word. And we were fortunate enough that Zerbinski and Bus and Steel Smith and Fleming and those guys were bowling a couple days ahead of us, and we were going to bowl some of the stuff with them, but. We'd happen to go in there and, you know, just kind of watch them bowl a little bit, scouted some stuff out, realized the last thing you wanted to do if you wanted to try to win the Bowler's Journal was bowling the fresh. Uh, so we waited till you know, the second squad of the day and and bowled, and, you know, we caught a, caught a decent cross of people in front of us, and, you know, i shoot 300 out of the gate. The pair actually had one less game on it than the other pairs. <laughs> okay. And... Uh, but then the you know the other two pairs we went to we we were able to burn them up a little bit but it took about four four or five frames on each pair and then we got them dialed in again and you know went two teen two thirty to finish for seven fifty seven fifty one I think it was and at the time was second singles and yeah we took over the we were in first and second doubles which I think now I'm third we've dropped a third and fourth in doubles but still good good start to the week out there yeah that's great and then uh then you uh you bowled the the inside bowling tournament uh our event yes and made the show there yeah that was awesome i i mean great week hard pattern but scorable you, you know it was i would easy is far from the right word to use it was easier to get to the pocket but you had to learn to trick them to knock them all over. I mean, they're, the majority of the field could get to the pocket. and Actually, the scoring pace was a little lower until the C squad. and But the C squad was mainly re-entries and people that had seen the pattern, they were able to make their adjustments. And, it, you know, when you got that many good bowlers in one building, the scoring pace is going to go up, especially when you give them a second chance. Yeah. Joining us here uh, now in the chat is Matt Cantonazero. Hello, Matt. He said that uh, you can read about Rob Gotchel's being pretty good on bowl.com. And go over there. There's a few articles over there on you over the last couple of years. Yeah, Matt's a great guy. Oh, tell me about it. Unbelievable him. job in what he does at the USBCs. And, you know, I, I would love his job. I mean, to sit, watch bowling, write about bowling, you know, and just – see all the great players come through and get to talk to them on their theories of how they do things and I mean Jeff Regals is obviously well known for flooding the internet with information on the USBCs whether it's you know informing people about stuff USBC posts to his take on things and and stuff like that but you know Matt gets a little more than that because you know there's a lot of people that don't give as much information as Jeff and stuff like that and you know Matt gets to experience it and gets to meet all these great people and you know not just the good bowlers but the stories of people bowling their 50th USBC yeah. I mean that's that's an amazing yeah, accomplishment every year, 50 yeah. years. you know that's a special event I had a I don't remember if it was last year or the year before but a guy on my squad reached his 50th year and I mean, I got the chills. It was, I mean, everybody gave him a standing ovation. I mean, oh, yeah. When you think about it, if you start at 18, that means you haven't missed one from 18 to 68. If you yeah. if you bowled 50 yeah. straight, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. It's unbelievable. It's a lot of traveling. You know, it's, it's the love of the game. Yeah, that's what bowling's all about, too. Once you start bowling, man, you just, you're stuck for life. So you go from the inside bowling tournament. And I might be skipping some events, so so feel free to come in. But I Eric, saw you at the Ozarks. Ozarks, right yeah. Right after that. Yeah. How'd you do there? I had a decent showing. Shot 300 team event, which yeah. was the first 300 of the tournament. Uh, you know, that doubles a singles house. It kind of gets me every year. I, yeah. I, 
I've, I've never bowled under 700 in the team house, and a lot of people struggle there. It's kind of my bread and butter. And then uh, singles and doubles, I had like 680, 660. And I mean, I was just under 2,100 all events. Not bad. I, no, you got to take that. I mean, I'm not Mr. Orf. I mean, it, right. it, it may as well be the greater Orf Open right. as far <laughs> as I'm concerned, as sick as his ball reaction is in the singles and doubles house is every I'm year. I'm part of a 10-way split with that, too, yeah, by yeah, the way, yeah, which well, is nice. As you should be. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you find your way. <laughs> find your way to g get in there in somebody's <laughs> pocket. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got in there. Um, so you go there, and I I want to I want to fast forward to the tournament down in Florida, Matt, uh, Eric Ramos's tournament, right? Yeah, Eric, great job. He, Eric's a. I met him at the High Roller a few years ago, and obviously I'd heard things about his tournament, but I mean it, it can be pricey to fly right, to Florida sure. and. You know, I finally looked into it, found a couple $79 one-ways down there, and I'm like, I'm going to give it a shot. I hear they're nasty hard, and they were. 30, it was 37 feet, one-to-one -one ratio uh, on old AMF. Well, I shouldn't say old because it was on AMF Synthetics, and the first three panels were all different years. Like, one panel was two years old, another one was like five years old, another one okay. was like eight years old. So and so pair to pair was tricky, you know. They obviously they'd come out of other bowling centers and stuff like that, and but yeah, they were hard. I mean, they hooked. Friday night he had a sweeper, forty feet, gutter to gutter, and uh, I actually shot three hundred. The first game of the sweeper, it's probably the greatest three hundred of my life. Uh, the greatest. The of, the, of the great. I, I have two at the national tournament, which are they're very special to me. But sh twelve shots. These were the twelve best shots I've ever made in one game. I, I won the sweeper with six forty one, with shooting three hundred. Wow. That's how hard they were. Shooting three hundred. Yeah. Holy I, I mean, I think, I think somebody cashed at five eighty, and they're. I mean, we're talking seventy bowlers. Wow. They're hard. And then, uh, yeah, went on. I kind of snuck my way in each cut. I was, you know, they cut the field in half. I made the cut by like four spots. We bowl again. I make. I made the next cut, you know, fairly convincingly. And then they cut to eight for match play. And I snuck my way into the eighth seed. And then it goes to eight man bracket, best two out of three. And I, I just happened to, you know, work my way through, bowl the friend of mine pj haggerty was the number one seed and absolutely mauled him that i mean he went 190 over and wow i it, wow. it was very very impressive holy cow 190 over i'll tell you that yeah that's a lot so that's a great event so those of you that yeah. uh think bowling is dying out there there's a great series of events out there that that people can bowl there's plenty out there that to yeah. have. Bowling is not dead. No, it's not. And, uh, obviously, with the work you guys do, the work that Canizaro's doing with USBC, doing all these webcasts, it, I mean, it's great because it's bringing exposure not only to the game, but to elite players that you know around where you know you can watch your friends bowl even though you can't come. You yeah, know, we'd all we'd all love cool, it to be like yeah. golf, and there'd be five thousand people in this bowling center cheering everybody <laughs> on. But at the same time, we know that's not possible. Right, so right. now, this is the next best thing. Yeah, through the web, you know. I mean, my my grandma even knows how to log on and right. and watch. You know, <laughs> I had to write it all down on paper for her. Right. But yeah. I mean, she's able to watch, and you know, she loves it because she's she can't travel all these miles and, and stuff like that so it's so, great so let's go back to, to our event the the 2013 storm inside bowling open we're uh we're chit-chatting here with uh none other than, than rob gotchel here in the booth take a look at rob over here hi everybody <laughs> there he is none other than the rob gotchel matt turek mike flanagan here off to the side um so you make the TV show as we tried our first attempt at a real TV broadcast. Um, were there any nerves at all going on during that, or did you feel real comfortable? I, I was actually pretty comfortable. Uh, I made a couple of World Team Challenge shows way back when I was a kid. 
19. And, I mean, I was scared back then. I, I, I'll never forget my first two shots. On t- and they were hard. <laughs> my first two shots were run away Brooklyn, run away Brooklyn. I missed a two-pin, you know, in the f- – you have video archive footage of this? Uh, I have it on VHS at home. I'd like, I'd like for you to bring that to me next yeah. time you come to St. Louis. I'll turn it into All right. digital and yeah. put it on YouTube. Yeah, Rick Miller's got a couple copies of it, too. Nice. Okay. I mean, Rick Miller was the king of the World Team Challenge back right, in the day. Right, right. In uh, which he is here in, in town yeah, for the weekend. He's, he's just not bowling the squad. No, right? he, uh, he tweaked his back a little this oh, morning. Okay. And uh, so he wanted to rest up before we bowl trios tonight. And, okay. You know, just kind of get it stretched out and stuff. But, uh, no, I mean, the TV show, it was great. It was a great experience. And, obviously, I think the best thing that called me was probably being in the 4-5 or five match because we got lots of practice on the one, you know, on the lane opposite the pair. Yeah. Because you guys were setting up, you were running the promo video, yeah. all that stuff. And, it, I mean, we got a lot of shots with Louie right in our face with that camera. Because, yeah. to me, <laughs> all the uh, all the other stuff going on, it, it, it's still you against the lane. Yeah. But it's different when somebody's standing He's, on I the mean, lane he next to you. He was close. He was yeah, with a five camera feet away, yeah. even closer. <laughs> well, and especially when you're playing them. Straight. Yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, you're, on, r- you're right. You're right of ten. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's different if yeah, you're, you're close. Yeah, it's different <laughs> if you're sliding in the left gutter, yeah. flinging it to the right. But you know, y- your ball had to be right of ten. Had to be yeah. going up the lane. And when you're standing that far right, and I drift a little left, so I start a little further yeah. right than where I slide. Yeah, you look like feel like you're gonna hit him. Yeah, well, it felt like he was standing right in front of yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he did a good job of staying still though. Like he oh went, yeah, he was r- like really getting the sh- when you're yeah. on the right lane. He he locked you in at the yeah. approach and then never moved until you threw the ball. And and he uh, he ended up getting out of the chair for quite a while because the chair squeaked on him oh, a couple of times. Really? And you could tell he kind of felt oh, bad, really? you know. But but no, he he did a great job. And I mean, I couldn't be they, that still no, if I was holding that really camera. I'd be shaking shots. shaking yeah. more <laughs> holding the camera than yeah. I am with the bowling ball. <laughs> Yeah, it turned out pretty good, and uh, obviously we'd like to have seen you do a little bit better, Rob, but, um, you know, you beat Adam in the first match, which was, you know, interesting. You guys are good friends. and Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the one that really surprised me that I really thought should have won was I thought Brad Miller should have got past Craig. You know, I, I kind of I, – I watched the show back. Obviously, I was more intent on the first two matches. Just sure. To, I don't like to video myself a lot because – I'm more of a feel player, and I don't like to be analytical, so I just kind of watch to get a feel. And, you know, I, I watched the other matches, and, yeah, I actually thought that Brad. Hold on, we got a quick oh, uh, Tim Mack check-in. I would like to chime in here and thank Rob Gauchal for not bowling that squad to give an extra spot to the rest of the field <laughs> because if the, he was bowling, definitely uh, I'd only have a chance for nine spots instead of ten. So, uh, Gauchal, thank you very much for sitting behind the mic and uh, saying hi to all the people out there. We really appreciate it, us <laughs> bowlers. <laughs> You're welcome, Tim. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, so Rob, you were saying uh, where, where, where you were uh, talking oh, about the other match. Yeah, and I really I, when when I had the one shot that hooked high and got four, and once I knew my match was over, my thought honestly was that Brad Miller was going to win the tournament because he had the best look in the middle of the transition you know bill's look was really really good late i, I mean he really mangled the field at the end of match play and i mean he was bowling 250 every game when everybody else was you know i was just trying to shoot two teen every game and but in that middle brad could just that little soft floater he would throw right he'd get it to the spot it check and it just it just float right into the one three as soon as I saw the friction develop, I'm like, Brad Miller's the winner. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, a couple of bad breaks. He, le- he left the, was it the 5-7? Five, 5-7. Five, si- five, seven. Yeah. And, and if some 10 pins. Yeah, yeah. And it just, he just never got, he never got the break to really loosen him up a little bit. Yeah. And, and I, I th- honest, I think if he would have got that little break and loosened up, I thought Brad Miller, I, going in, you would ask me if I, if I thought I could run the ladder and, I, I thought I could, and I thought Brad was. I mean, obviously, you don't want to bowl Bill. I right, mean, Bill right, is yeah. Bill. <laughs> sure, but, sure. But I thought Brad would be. The good thing is, is Bill wasn't bowling on the pair. He was only going to get a bowl one game. Where 
us coming up the ladder, we had more games, understood the transition of the pair a little better because he only gets five minutes of practice. Well, it's not it's not yeah, a lot. and you guys have been bowling on that pair yeah. the whole day. Well, you know the transition. Yeah. You know how the shot's breaking down. I, I mean, Bill's one of the greatest bowlers in the world. I won't take nothing away, but yes. I thought the Brad Miller match was a, a, a key. Whoever bowled Brad, if they could beat Brad, they had a realistic shot of, of winning the tournament because I thought – Brad in the two hole was going to be a good test because he Brad doesn't give you frames. No, no, not at all. And Nidifer is a hell of a player. Oh yeah, I, I mean he bowled two fifty at me. You can't. Yeah, you can't. I, argue with that. I, I I got four through the middle. It, it ultimately cost me, you know. But it, I mean, two fifty is two fifty. It do, it doesn't leave you much room. And he and he had Bill on the ropes too until he missed the ten pin. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And he can't bowl this tournament because he was too high in points on the PBA tour. Yeah. So it just goes to show what kind of up and comer and oh yeah he had a great an unbelievable teams. World Series in Vegas. He did. He was I think he qualified in the top ten for the World he Championships did. and he was up there the whole time. He was. And uh, I was out there. You know, I yeah. came out for the member non-member and. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the first times I'd really seen him bowl extensively. And, yeah, I mean, he gets it done a little different than the rest, but he's very good at what he does. But he gets it done. Oh, man, when he strikes, he just keeps on striking. <laughs> yeah, he does, for sure. So it's uh, uh, 10 to 4 here in suburban Chicago. And now we cut from 21 bowlers down to 10. It was almost impossible to keep up with scoring pace there. But yeah, we only had one update. It looks like Allen was plus 48. I'm sure he's safe. Gasson was plus 2. Uh, all the way down to 10th place was minus 17. So we'll have uh, a cut score here for you in, in just a moment. And then they're going to bowl two more games. And they'll cut that in half down to 5. And then one more game to determine which three are going to make it into the, to the big dance. Yeah, the, the toughest thing mentally about the qualifying process here at the Boot Hill is pins don't carry over. Yeah. And you see it time and time again where somebody will bowl 660, 670 this first set, and and you get real high, you're feeling real good, but you got to realize it starts all over yeah. in 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta you got to come back down, get back into that mentality of, I'm going to bowl 400 and give myself a chance for these next two games. He has tweaked his format a little because in years past, the first cut, I believe, was one and three. So now uh, the first cut's a little easier to, to get by. Uh -huh. And then, uh, But then the second cut was always you know half the field. And now this year, he, he's added the third round. But now after two rounds, you get $400, I think it is, which, which is good because that way – if you do miss the next cut, you've essentially earned a free re-entry plus a little cash to bowl yeah. again. But yeah. So how long does it normally take here? Between this and Generally, you will hear the scores announced here probably in the next five minutes. And they'll – I don't remember if they practice or not. I'm not sure. They might draw for lane, get one ball in each lane, and let her rip. I don't. I don't feel like there's a there's not a full practice session involved yeah. between here. Good news is they're going to use uh, yeah, all, all of our, our lane pairs. pairs. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect. So um, out of these bowlers, we're going to have six out of the ten of them with a camera right on them. So yep. we'll yeah, have it covered here. It's again. perfect. You know, and th this is where it gets good too, because you know, essentially, so we're going to go to five. Yeah. And then those five are going to bowl one game. Yeah. And take the top three. Yeah. Top three are going to go to the to the finals. To the finals. Sunday. <clears throat> and, you know, if you, obviously there'll be a few more entries tomorrow and stuff because a lot of guys with, you know, the morning block was a little draining today. Yeah. I bet. That, that was a tough pattern. Yeah. I, w I was going to bowl the two o'clock squad, uh, but I just didn't feel like I was mentally prepared, you know, to come back and. And do it again. And, and chew it up right away. And, you know, with two more shots, two chances to qualify tomorrow. Yeah. Go get some lunch, relax. Take a break, relax. Yeah. yeah. Eat some dinner, watch and You know what, games. Rob? You make a great point because you bowled the step ladder last night all the way down to the final. And, uh, you know, Jeffrey's a great competitor, but, you know, Jeffrey did go through the face on that last shot. Yeah. And I'd, 
I didn't get to bed as quickly as yeah, I'm I sure. Would. Yeah, I'm sure you were a little fired up. I mean, not you know, you're a smooth, calm guy, yeah. but you know, and then then you come in here this morning and and you bowl and they play a little bit differently than you thought they would. Cut score. Here we go. Oh my. 579. 579. They're going to come up and draw for lane assignments. But back to you, Rob. And then you come in this morning and, you know, kind of grind away. And you're just like, man, I need to just get something to eat. I don't yeah. want to rush around. Yeah, you can't. 571 is the, is the number, actually. Oh. But yeah, and then, you know, I just want to say this point because Pete Weber competed in Milwaukee and was just exhausted. Yeah. And didn't go bowl the senior U.S. Open. So. Some people were giving Pete a hard time, and he should have gone to the Senior U.S. Open. But that's a lot it, of games. It just, it, I mean, he bowled like 98 games. And you know what? He bowled 98 games against the kids, and he still, still, yeah, weren't, in my opinion, one of the top three bowlers in the world right now. Yeah. I, I mean, I bowled with him in a regional, you know, a few months ago, and I mean, Pete is at the top of his game. Yep. And it's, yeah, I, I don't blame him at all, it, especially when they're going to be hard like this. If you come in just lollygagging it around, you can cost yourself just one bad frame a game, and this can be 40, 50 pins. Yeah. And, and 40, 50 pins is a lot, yeah. you know. So it looks like uh, 571 made it, and... They are uh, going to throw one ball on each lane and go right back into these two games. What was Brett? Uh, he was the number. Brett Cunningham Brett was. Cun Brett Cunningham was the number. I'm sure we'll have that in a moment. Brian, will you have standing soon? I got All we got is game two. Okay. Just got game two right now. But it is updated on the website. It is? On, on the tabs, yeah, game Thir two. Oh, game two. two. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to figure out well, who all made it looks here. Looks like we got A.J. Chapman, Chad Nelson, Jackie Carbonetto, Brent Bowers, Brett Cunningham, Matt Gasson, Liz Johnson. No, 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 no. You Marshall Kent. Marshall Kent. Tim Mack looks like he's getting a ball back out. And is, is this Femley over here? Femley? Yeah, I guess so. He would be the only... Oh, man. Did you see this? Holy cow. Two count. Two count. Need to re-rack. <laughs> Can you show that on uh, camera here? Uh, it's Just do the 13 and 14 pair, and it'll be on the right. Oh, yeah, it's on the right. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, Matt Gasson, two. Two. A.J. Chapman uh, did it uh, in the sweeper this morning, bowling next to me. I thought his head was going <laughs> to blow a gasket. His face got so red. Yeah. Uh. Tim Mack. Liz Johnson leaves an 8 10. Uh, they must be carrying down. I know, uh, you look I up came, there. I came three in and splits. you're like, yeah, they're a little crispy on the back. And they, they were crispy. They were. Well, it looks like they're. Uh, that's the thing. This building, you know, the surface is still fairly new. It's like it, it runs downhill or yeah, something. Yeah. Marshall just washed out. Cunningham, light swisher. Yeah, I mean, they definitely look like they're getting tight. You, you know what's funny is because the 35-foot pattern this morning by game three, all of a sudden everybody went from their ball duck hooking if you were going square to, you saw a 2 4 8 10 yeah. washout. Yeah, we saw three we off the that. right. Yeah. What was up with that? It Just severe out of bounds or was it carried it, down? I don't know. It was so funny because you could play out. <laughs> Tim Mack. <laughs> Tim Mack. <laughs> so good to have Tim Mack back in the United States. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm happy for his wife. <laughs> yeah, me too. And his kiddo too. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, mean he, he having said dad he, away. He said it was, you know, obviously great experience, and he's been a a legend over there for years overseas, and but. It was time to come home. Get he's having some surgery and stuff, and you know it's time to be home with his family. You say ties will advance. Ties will advance because they're taking three next round. So assuming that if they get six, 
That still works out. Skip two pair. Skip two pair moving to the right. Ties advance. Go get him, Tim Mack. Two games. Tim's just now understanding the format. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's razor sharp. So where are we at here, Matt? What uh, we we're on? watching 9 and 10 and 17 and 18 here. I'll okay. throw it on Tim Mack real quick as he's throwing his first ball. Getting ready to throw his first ball. You saw Liz Johnson strike on 15 there on the right side of your screen. Timmy a little high, leaves a nine. Send you down to nine and ten with Chapman's bowl. That was your pick, Matt. Thank you. Yep, this is my pick to win. Got a little flat. What happened to my pick? He must have had a bad last game. He must have. I think Mike's got updates through game three. Chris Prather. Was it Prather? Prather, I think. Minus 32. He missed by so three. That means he had 168 the last game. We got a shout out in the chat there, Rob. Where do us common folks get a pair <laughs> of sexy beast mode glasses <laughs> like this? <laughs> Rob, you know what's interesting about that, actually, is I we talked about this on the car ride down. I believe within five years, at least 40% of the United States are going to have those Google goggles. Yeah. You know, they're, out, they're, they're outlawing them in casinos already. Oh, really? You can't wear them in. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, well, Google they're goggles. They're technically a smartphone without the phone part. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you can't, you can't use your phone at a table. You know, I don't. I don't remember. I've had this pair for a couple of years now. I don't. I don't remember <laughs> even remember where I got it. These them. aren't your usual pair, are they? No, this is. I have an all white pair that I that I wear on occasion. I've well, I've seen you wear those a lot. Yeah, the uh, the whole white thing started. Brian O'Keefe, assistant coach for Team USA, he wears a white belt all the time, and the jokes started as yeah. Wearing a white belt gets you 11 pins a game. Oh, 11? I say 15. Yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> sa he says 11 pins a game. So I'm like, well, heck, if it's going to work, yeah, I'm going to take it. You know, I'm going <laughs> to take the 11 pins. Yeah. So then, like, one time somebody's like, we should get a white pair of glasses. So I, I got an all I got an all white pair. Yeah, I mean, you do. Everybody wears the black one. You know, uh -huh. the black. Everybody's yeah. got the black now. So I bought an all white pair. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, hey, maybe that's 22 pins. 22 pins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I bowled some tournaments where you need 322 to win. Yeah. If you could if you could bowl in a tournament where you could wear a hat, maybe you could put a white hat on. <laughs> and a white armband. Just, just white out. Yeah. 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 That's like it. the NBA basketball game. Right, yeah. <coughs> so, Alan Felmley led at plus 69. Jackie Carbonetto, plus 12, was second. Good for her. Matt Gasson, third at plus 10. The other player that was plus was Liz Johnson at plus seven. Thelmley, he gets a handful. Chad Nelson, he is a machine. Striking a machine. This is good. This is really good 10 bowlers right here. It really yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Timmy, Liz, and Chad are like the senior citizens of the group. <laughs> yeah, they are, actually. I mean, Chapman, he's not 21. Marshall's only 20. I think Gasson's right around 21, 22. So is Jackie. Bowers is early 20s. You're right about Allen. He does get a handful. Oh, boy. He does not need any get-back sauce on that ball. <laughs> get back he's sauce. got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be stuck inside your head for 24 hours. Well, you know. I just want to see where this stuff comes from. A get back sauce. Yeah, we got names for everything in the book. What did you call in the squad meeting at the IB Open? You called the St. Louis Bowlers. Was it Wall Whackers? Yeah, yeah Wall Whackers. Wall Whackers. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd never heard that before. Really? That really? was good. No. Wow. <laughs> I also call them Dump Doctors. <laughs> dump Doctors. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. Yep, wall whackers and dump doctors. Wall whackers. <laughs> can't believe Rob it. I needs can't a believe. pink pair. 
You had never heard that, huh? No. Wow. Were you laugh? Were you trying not to laugh when I said it? Like I was like dumbfounded because you know, <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, you know all the league bowlers down there, you know, because yeah. yeah. you were referencing the the good local turnout, you yeah. know, in in your squad meeting. And at first, it was kind of shocking that you just kind of call them all out but you know well that's what i do yeah. i mean yeah, that's, but, that's what he's known for but you don't yeah you don't beat around the bush friendly he doesn't friendly, he does in a friendly yeah. manner you know yeah no i i mean you get what you see with me i'm the first guy that if you if you destroy local tournaments and you have 25 300s and 3800s in a season or whatever ridiculous numbers it is i'm exaggerating of course right now but and then you don't show up to one of my tournaments and you love to bowl, and you bowl every weekend, but you just skip mine, yeah. or mine's got more money in it, yeah, I, you're a wall whacker because you're afraid to come bowl my tournament. But but if you come out and bowl in my event and fall flat on your face, I will not. I will give you nothing but respect. Yep. I'll give that person way more respect for bowling bad than somebody running their mouth saying, so-and-so's not very good because they bowled the IB open and they didn't bowl good, blah, blah, blah. Well, did you bowl? No. Well, then shut up. Yeah, exactly. Okay? And then the other thing is, too, is when those people that don't think they can compete on a tough condition and all they can do is bowl good on house shots and then they come bowl my tournament and they cash, I actually sit down with them, look them in the eye, shake their hand, and say, I am extremely proud of you. Yeah. Look, you can do it. Yep. And... and, and that's what we need more of. You know, they don't have to come and get in the brackets no, and stuff they like that. Pay your entry. I mean, you get a free ball out of it. Yeah, you know, especially at your it's tournament a, it's this a way year. To win. It was what 200 and 260. 260 to enter, and you had a bowling ball that you could have sold for two hundred dollars. Yeah. So essentially, to bowl eight games of qualifying, you're paying sixty dollars for a chance at eight grand. Yeah. It seems to make sense to me. It, yeah. it makes sense. See, that's how we were looking at it, Rob. And, and if you get a check, check was even better. 500, 400. 500. 500, last check. Yeah. So if you sell the bowling ball to somebody, even if you sell the bowling ball for 150, it costs you 110 to get in, make $390 if you get a check. Yep. And that's better than a lot of tournaments pay for an all day and you win it. Yeah. And you, you drove. In a local area. Yeah, you drove to the bowling center. Two times round trip from your house, <laughs> sleeping right. in your own bed. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, you're not, your expenses aren't too much. Looks like right now we got one, two, three. Well, Marshall. We, we have five people that are below even pace right now. Right. And Marshall Kent has the first five. Yes. Take your full screen down there. This kid is crazy good. I've I've been able to get pretty pretty close and got to know him a lot here the last couple months. We've bowled a lot of the same tournaments and and stuff. We've become fairly good friends, and I really like this kid's game. And I mean, he is one of the best right now. Oh, uh, pocket oh, seven ten. Lucky nope. break got seven up. Didn't you bowl doubles with him in St. Louis? I did. The second we bowled, we had really only met in person two times. I, I met, I personally met him for the first time at Team USA trials this year. And then I saw him in Lincoln two weeks when he bowled the college for my son two weeks before your tournament. And honestly, I don't think he'd ever seen me bowl. <laughs> and when you guys bowled together? Yeah, until we bowled. Because uh, I had sent him a met he missed the spare. I uh, I'd sent him a message on Facebook because I saw he was bowling with Fagan, the first double squad. Yeah. And I mean we obviously we chatted for quite a bit at team trials and stuff, and I saw he wasn't on the second squad, and I was already bowling with Vernon the first Vernon Peterson the first squad. So I just sent him a message, hey, you want to bowl doubles the second squad at Flanagan's tournament? And he's like, perfect. <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> That's how it happens, yeah. folks. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was a little nervous. I mean, this kid is like, you know, the, the real deal. Right. <laughs> I like mean, he's, he, he's the next he star. He is the next star, you know. And, I mean, he wins everything. He bowls in the, you know, the Team USA stuff and, you know, all the college stuff. He's, he's just really, really good. Yeah, 
So Marshall's looking good. Yeah, I think 190 might be... I think 190-ish is going to be a good score right here to get in. Allen's going at a 180 pace. Let's see, Jackie Carbonetto has 54 in the fourth. Bowers was 180 pace. Chad Nelson's 220 pace. Gasson 180 pace. Yeah. Liz 190 pace. No, Liz is 210. Is she? She got triple spare strike. She went strike, strike, strike. Yeah, you're right, yeah. 210. I mean, so right now your front runners are Liz, Chad Nelson, and Marshall Kent. And uh, actually, Tim Max got a triple now, too. So those, those four are the only four that are currently plus and looking really good. I am going to take a shot in the dark. I'm going to say 186. Well, they bowl two games. Oh, it's two games. Yep. Oh, yeah. The next round's one game. Yep. yep. So I'm going to write these down as we go along as they finish. So if you guys fire them at me as they finish, we'll... Uh, get these written down and we'll do our own hand calculations. All right, I'm going to go with a cut score of 371. That's my pick. How about you, Matt? 371. I'm going to go um, I'm going to say 390. Yeah. I just thought about mine again. But <laughs> I'll, stick, I'll stick by it. I'm going to stick that by too. it. I did All right. Too. Well, I'm going to go I said 610. I'm going to go 370. What, isn't that what I did? No, oh, you said 390. You okay. said 390. Yeah, I said 371. Oh. And I'm taking 370. He pulled the old Price is yeah, Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, or the, yeah Price is Right yeah. maneuver. Go right below me, so he's got everything below me. Yep. Brett Cunningham says 385. <laughs> got some answers in the chat there. 392, 402, 385, 380. I think uh, Jackie Carbonetto is going to make it in to the next round. Who's going to lead, Rob? Uh, Marshall? Yeah, I mean, Marshall, Marshall's the guy with all the X's. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I'm going to pick Liz. Okay. I'm going to set the over-under for Marshall Kent at 245, Rob. Are you going to take over or under? Over. Matt? I'll take over. Wait a minute. Oh, I thought he was going into the 10th. I'll still uh, take the yeah. I'll still take the over. Yeah, 67. Uh, it means he's got one miss left. Yeah. 245 is the right line to set, isn't it? No, you're correct. Yeah. I'm going to take the under. He, he's. I think he's going to go like tap tap. His his line at, at 245 is begging people to take the over. I want everybody to book the over. Horton will take over. I love this guy's his name is Don't Worry, It Will Be Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the creative names people come up with in the chat. Is, is that Horton? I think so. I From the way what it sounds like he's saying. It sounds like he's talking about himself. Oh, it's Ken Duffield. Oh. <laughs> He's the president of the Horton Nation fan club. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now here's Marshall Kent. Bring Kent up. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, All right. That's nine, a triple. Nine spare strike to go over. Nine spare strike to go over. Can I change 45. My <laughs> is it, is it yeah, you late? can. <laughs> you can I'll go take over. the over then. Okay. All right. Watch, he's going to go like Greek church. <laughs> well, on the last time on this lane, he almost 710. Yeah. Come on, Marshall Kent. Make me look like a fool. Boy, that was a smooth release. Oh. oh. <laughs> Man, you're like a black <laughs> cloud. You're like a black cloud. I was begging you guys to take the over. Wow. But that's still a good game for Marshall. It He's is. sitting good. It's a very good game. We want Marshall to do well. I just knew that right lane might have might have I can't believe I called that. Might have got him a little bit. Get four. Oh. You even wanted to change your answer, Matt. And I, I let know, you. yeah, I shouldn't have. I knew it was gonna happen. So two twenty eight for Marshall Kent. I write all this down. Two twenty eight down here to Tim Mack. It's up in the ninth. You can see Liz Johnson off to the right there. That's a strike in the ninth. She's got 184 in the eighth with a strike up. She can shoot 244. Rob's looking good with Liz. She's just so tough on these patterns. She is. She, she doesn't give you pins. You, you have to beat her. She's trying to copy me with the glasses thing. I had mine first. So you know. <laughs> I think you're right about that, actually, Rob. She is trying to copy yeah. it. I'll tell you what you ought to do. You ought to see if Liz will bowl the Holiday Doubles Tournament in St. Louis with you. Because she bowled with God, with uh, with your buddy Barda last year. Yeah. And just steal her away. Yeah, I should. <laughs> Adam Barda. You should say, look, I... I, I, I mean, Adam's a singles player. Yeah, you should say, <laughs> although, yeah, they finished second. Bowled great, but... Uh, they finished second. <laughs> Yep, always finishing second. <laughs> <laughs> it was Adam's fault, too. It always is. Yeah. I mean, Liz, Liz averaged like 280, you know. I think Adam was like 250. That's not enough. It's a high-scoring tournament. It was a lot of fun, though. You know me. I don't like to 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 bowl on the wall with the wall whackers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it was a lot of fun. Hey, I did the right thing. I tried. To, I brought a lefty too. You know. Yeah, you did. That's normally a really good thing there. Just normally one with a little higher ball speed. I think. Yeah, it's, it's better. You need the higher ball speed, higher rev rate. Who is this guy here on seventeen? Flemley. Okay, I like the way. One ninety one. One ninety one for Flemley. Good to see Brent Bowers out here bowling, huh, Rob? Yeah, he. Uh, I hadn't seen him in a few years, and I get some stuff on Facebook. He's starting to try to run his own little Bowers bowling tour down in Wichita. I don't yeah. know a lot about it, but I, I know he's trying to start something with competitive bowling down there. And you know, I saw he was running an event for uh, some tornado relief in Oklahoma City that oh, he was putting good. together. <coughs> Oklahoma City got messed up yeah. by that storm. A couple times. Two, a yeah, two AJ weeks Chapman, 180. Yeah, he threw a gutter in the sixth. Yeah. It was on a, It was on an open, so, it, I mean, it, <laughs> it no, cost it him. An, yeah. It didn't cost him double time. Tim Mack, 205. Matt Gasson, 177. Pretty solid 177. He only had one open. Just got some bad count, made some tough spares in there for 177. Brad Cunningham going to have a clean game, 180. <laughs> yeah, two strikes. 
That's, uh, that's a grind, man. But, but I tell you what, you pick your ball up and go to your next pair and say, that's a pretty good game. That's, yep. that's all you got to do. Because if you're making the sevens and six count spares, you're yeah. you're not those you're are not you're not hurting yourself. Oh jeez, I thought I jinxed him. Yeah, we got a bit of a crowd in here now too. People are starting to shuffle in. Everybody's getting amped up for the Calcutta later. You gonna throw some money around, or are you not? I might to do, do that. that. What's uh? What's what's that kind of what's that kind of like? Obviously, we're talking about you know the monopoly dollars. Yeah, yeah. But they <laughs> what kind of monopoly dollars get thrown around? Oh, I think last year the the most. I think a, a team might have went for fifteen hundred monopoly dollars. So that's the uh, that's the gold ones. Yeah, the five hundred dollars. Yeah, three of the gold three, ones. Three of the gold yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. You know, the last time I was in this booth, we talked Monopoly, too. About we the, <laughs> we about really, the, we about really the, did. the new piece. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, what, <laughs> what piece right would we be? Yeah. Liz Johnson, 233. <laughs> Need a Rob Gottschall game? You just shot 2 0. 2 0, that's a great game. Relax. Timmy. 2 11 for Nelson. Timmy's always in the spotlight. Always got to be. Just waiting on Jackie and Brent. Yeah, they're both struggling a little here. Rob, that's a nice jersey you got on today, too. Thank you. That was uh, compliments of our USBC sponsor, Pete Barda, and NABRrankings.com. Uh, or NABrankings.com, it would be. He's launching his site here in the next uh, month or two. He went fishing today rather than make the trip. <laughs> I heard he had to plant blueberry bushes and go fishing rather yeah, than come here with Adam. And rough life. Yeah, Pete. Um, Pete usually is <laughs> never one to miss a tournament, no. but no, he's, he's not. And he's missed two. Time. He's missed two in a row. You know what's funny is I text Adam on. Uh, must have been Tuesday, and I said, "Hey, is Pete coming this weekend?" And he's like. No, and I can't believe it. I said, me either. I can't believe he doesn't want to talk about himself in the booth on inside bowling. Yeah, he missed the IB Open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't come that to Baltimore drive, last though. weekend, though, yeah. either. Really? Yeah. Were you in Baltimore last I week? I was. <laughs> what were you doing there? Oh, uh, with mixed doubles tournament. Okay. Yeah. The air conditioner broke, and the, it was oh my God. great tournament. I mean, the it, it was a really, really good tournament. Scores were pinch higher than they wanted. The left was tough yeah, to beat. Yeah. Uh, as three lefties averaged over 260 in qualifying. Oh, my God. Yeah, Pat McGainey from the Baltimore area averaged 273 for the 10 games of qualifying. But I don't care how well they are. 273 for 10 games is pretty good. Here's Brent Bowers here. You can see him on your screen. Brent doubled in the 10th. Now through the face for the 6-10. But he's going to shoot 180. That's a big double, 180. Yeah, 180 is going to be creeping him, keeping him close to the number. So here's the rundown. Liz Johnson, 233. Marshall Kent, 228. Chad Nelson, 211. Tim Mack, 205. Alan Felmley, 191. Those are your five. And then Brett Cunningham is sixth at 185. We have a tie for seventh between Brent Bowers and A.J. Chapman at 180. Matt Gasson is ninth with 177. And tenth is Jackie Carbonetto, 147. So 191 is fifth right now? Yep. yep. 382. So where are we going here? Let's go split screen. Okay. Uh, grab a couple pairs. Let's take the uh, outer pairs here as 9 and 10 and 17 and 18. Rob, yeah. we appreciate you sitting in with us for this, too. Oh, really no do. problem. I love doing it. I love what you guys do. I'll sit in here anytime. Chad Nelson just made the 3, 4, 6, 7, 10 on yeah. lane 16. I'm really not sure if we pulled off the bowling ball interviews earlier today. 
it was kind of awkward. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. I mean, no, you I, you walked right into that. I yeah. mean, you kind of scared me. You know, I don't tell anyone <laughs> that the bowling <laughs> balls are here. Out. And then at first, I, like I, did. I didn't realize it was you talking. I'm looking to see who else is on the <laughs> microphone, and because you were asking questions, I'm like, yeah. Then I'm like, he's really having a conversation well, with himself. With himself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's making up voices. I mean, let's let's be honest. That I mean, when I was a kid, I used to really do a lot of prank phone calls, and I would record them. Seriously, I was really? a big fan of the Jerky Boys yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and you know, I would I would call up pharmacies, and <laughs> you know, and and I would I would do a lot of that back in the day. It was it was quite funny. I called up a uh, I called up one time this uh, place called Basically Bagels. Yeah. That was the name of the, the business, basically bagels. And, you know, it's a bagel company, yeah. basically. <laughs> basically. basically. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Um, uh, but, yeah, so I called him up, we'll and, and I actually used that deep voice when I was younger, and I really can't do it as well now. I'm really out of practice. I don't do it anymore. But, you know, I was like, hello. Yes, do you guys sell any bagels? <laughs> and they're like, well, yeah, of course uh, we do. Oh, we. Brian's got one of those. Oh, Brian. And I said, of course, of course. You know, they said, well, of course we sell bagels. And I said, <laughs> well, I need one of those really big bagels. <laughs> and I basically, what I did is I sat through this whole phone call basically trying to say that I needed a bagel the size of a birthday cake. <laughs> and I wanted to come pick it up and put frosting on it. And that's what I wanted to serve because my 70 year old. Uncle was turning was turning seventy, and he wanted a bagel cake for his <laughs> birthday, and it was really funny. I mean, people used to come over and listen to it. But that sounds funny. One time, though, I called a restaurant, and the name of the place is called Charlie Gito's, back in St. Louis, and uh, they were down on like the hill, like the Italian hill, like all these Italians down there ran them. And this is back when caller ID was becoming very prominent. Yeah. I would star 67 in, but honestly, um, I called this one time, and, and I was like, yeah, let me speak to the big man, Charlie Ghetto. <laughs> let me talk to him. Let me get Charlie Ghetto on the phone. <laughs> the guy that answered the phone was like, I'm Charlie Gito, and you need to hang up right now. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm like, oh, Charlie, what's going on, man? How you doing? Charlie Ghetto, how you doing? Anyway, I kid you not, I never got so scared in my life. My phone rang from there immediately after the call. Really? And I have star 67, which just turns off your, your caller yeah. ID. Yeah. And they just kept calling for like four hours straight. Really? Yeah. Did I was scared to it? death. <laughs> no, I didn't answer. I was scared. I was like 14 years old. <laughs> so that gives you a little bit of insight to my creativity back when I was a younger, juvenile dummy so I, I believe that was pretty much about the end of my prank calling <laughs> but when you used to listen to the jerky boys as a kid you know that it kind of inspired you to do stuff like that yeah it's not so cool anymore in today's technology age yeah well you just you, there's no way for you to block your phone number from anybody these no. days yeah, you can't even post on message boards anymore without using your real name. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then it tells you, like, your location. <laughs> yeah. And, you know. That's the, the age we live in. So take you around these matches. Tim Mack, double, now eight. Brett Cunningham, open, open. Matt Gasson, open, strike open. Liz Johnson, double. Marshall Kent, eight spare, open. Alan Felmley, strike, spare, open. AJ Chapman, strike, open, three spare. Wow. He's throwing a couple out the window. Chad Nelson, spare, double. Jackie Carbonetto, spare, open, spare. And Brent Powers has an opening double. After this, bowlers are going to bowl one game. It'll be five of them. The top three will advance to our Boot Hill Finals tomorrow night. This is the first qualifier 
two games set. Two games set, yeah. For the, uh, it's game two of the two games set. And this weekend's festivities are brought to you by Storm, the bowler's company. A couple of new great pieces coming out. Check them out. Head over to stormbowling.com. And also, our friends over at Roto Grip, too, have three great bowling balls coming out. The Rumble, the Deranged, and the Totally Defiant. Is that new? We already went over it. Okay. It's an official standing sheet from the office. Troller Tom. <laughs> Brett finally gets on the board with the spare in the fourth there. We do have game four uh, standing updates on the tabs down below the uh, broadcast window there, below the chat. Might have to refresh your browser to get them to show up, but uh, that is after the first game of this two-game set with ten bowlers. Top five will advance. Five will go home or come back tomorrow, more or less, to re-enter. But and then uh, five will move on to the next round. Two bowlers in the next round. The two lowest scores are going to receive four hundred dollars each. The top three will have a crack at the fifteen thousand dollar top prize. Rob, the last two years, what was first place the last two years? Uh, two years ago it was 20,000, last year it was 15. So if I'm asking too many questions, let me know. But over the course of a year with you bowling all these tournaments and having success, what do your taxes look like? Ugly. Ugly. Yeah. It was bad last year. Yeah, <laughs> I was very upset. <laughs> <laughs> Like what's what's a what's a what's a good year for you? What's a year bowling wise that oh. at the end of the year? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I mean, like ten ninety nine wise. Yeah, la last year was about seventy some. Wow, wow. Yeah. that's great, bowling, Rob. Bowling amateur events. Wow, yeah. that's really outstanding. Yeah, I mean. USBCs were good. I so mean. really, for a minute here, let's really think about this for a minute. And thank you for sharing that because there are people that feel like you just have to be a pro to be able to make money in this game. And this is Rob. You're probably one of the one of the one of the elite amateur bowlers that goes about it as a business and bowls every weekend. You're not getting drunk in the bars. You know, you come and you bowl, and it's about the bowling. But you give back and do things like this. And you know you're looking at a 10.99, a 70k. That's some pretty good coin for throwing a bowling ball. Yeah, it it is. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, obviously there's a lot of expenses involved in that. So well, I mean, you're not, yeah, you're not clearing all that, but no, you're not. No, not at all. The toughest ones are ones where they where they tax the old brackets on you. You know, oh. you, you you pop a big bracket squad, and you know it, they get you there. But that's and mainly the USBC is the only one that really taxes you on the brackets anymore there used to be a big fight not fight but a big ar argument with the irs about brackets and taxing and because technically each bracket is a separate event is it was always the bowlers way of trying to not be taxed on brackets but the irs says yes they're separate events but you're using the same scores for all those ev separate really? events but it's a, it's a, so they consider it a taxable, because otherwise, if you just win fifty dollars a bracket, they can't tax you on that. But now, you know, when you can add it all up, I mean, it's good. St 
it's a lot of hard work. I mean, there's oh, I, I'm, I'm putting in miles. And it's not an easy life by any means. You're giving up your life. Yeah, and last year I, there was a five week stretch where I went on the road for five weeks. I never went home. I uh, I bowled. Oh jeez, right? Yeah, I never went home. I stayed with uh, a girl I was dating at the time when we were on the road. Sean Rangel who's actually bowling this tournament this week. He went with me, and well, we played some golf during the week. We had some fun and stuff, but. Yeah, I mean, it was it was tough. I mean, and that's what they used to do back in the day. I mean, the, yeah. the tour, that's what it was. You you didn't come home for weeks yeah. and weeks. And, you know, we bowled a bunch of tournaments. Uh, you know, we started out. I started out at, like, TNBA Nationals. Then went up to Grand Rapids for a 10 grander. Then the shootout at the Fort. Then here. Then we bowled a mixed doubles in Cincinnati. Yeah, it was just... It's a lot of traveling. Doing laundry on the road. Yeah, you know what? It's funny. Is last year was the first time I'd done laundry at a laundromat <laughs> since, you know, my younger years. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And, uh, but you know what? I, I kind of enjoyed it because literally you can do all your laundry in an hour and a half <laughs> yeah. rather, yeah. rather than it taking like half a day. Yeah, yeah right. you're right. You know, and... You know, laundry mats, I got the video. I felt like a kid again. I was yeah, sitting there yeah, playing video, video games. games. Yeah, Galaga or yeah. Old, oh, yeah. old school yeah. video games. One of those console sit-down yeah. back man or, yeah. or a Neo Geo. It had, this one had a pinball, oh, pinball no. machine. Oh, yeah. I played a lot of pinball. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. I'm a huge fan of pinball. Yeah, I used to play a lot of pinball. My favorite is the uh, Monopoly pinball game. Yeah. At, I went to uh, Junior Jog one year with my buddies and I didn't bowl I just went out to watch and hang out with them and uh, I spent probably 30 hours pumping 40 bucks into that Monopoly pinball machine they had all day long that's all I did so we'll take you around here can we uh, get Tim Mack up real quick AJ Chapman's making a run too after the three spare but oh, we got Tim Mack that's, on a, that's a double for Timmy so he's back on two O pace yeah and uh Brett Cunningham looking at 180 pace. 160. 160, yeah. Liz had a good start, five bagger, and she had an open spare, and now she's, oh, she's just barely made the 1248 there. So she's uh, pacing 220 still. She had five bagger. What else we got? Ba Bowers is on 2-0 pace. Chapman's on 2 teen pace, and he's out of the cut as of right now. Marshall Kent is uh, 71 in the fifth with a spare up in the sixth, now up in the seventh. He had 228 the first, so he's floating right around the even number total. It's going to be close. We're going to a lot of guys at 380 to 4-0 range. Oh, Gasson had a turkey working. Rip their X7. Now, how does the finals work tomorrow, Rob? Explain to us at home how that works. I, it's it's almost the exact same way. Uh, we'll just use 24 bowlers, for example. Sure. Uh, if 24 people are in the finals, uh, they'll bowl two games, cut to the top 12, then you bowl one game, down to six, bowl one game, down to three, and those three bowl one game for the for the money. Show me the money. So the, fir the final, the f yeah, the finals. The first, the first round of the finals is two games. Every round after that is one, and it's basically just the eliminator format, which is you know, with me winning the last two years, it's last year I was a little more dominating. The year before I was not. Uh, and that's, you know, where I kept preaching to you last night about the game plan of just hitting the head pin, making your spares. You you don't have to you don't have to be first. You got to be fifth. And you know, I mean, obviously it's good to <laughs> it's good to be first because you're you're striking and you're not sweating it out. But you know, right now, minus even to minus twenty is a good score, and you don't need to press and force yourself to bowl four forty. Brent Bowers has got a big double now. 109 in the fifth with a double up. Six and seven. 
and he was outside the cut too. Him and, 180. Hit, yeah, him and Chapman making a little move here. Trying to get in. Marshall, best he can do is shoot 189 now if he strikes out in the ninth and 10th. If he paces out, that's 169. And that would put, that would put him minus three. I actually think minus. How much? He would be minus three with his first game if he if he paced right. out for 169. Which I actually think minus three is going to be enough. I agree. Chad oh, Nel man. Chad Nelson's going to be in. He's got 2-0 this game, so he's going to he's going to be plus uh, 17 with spare strike. Tim Mack. What do you have the first game? 205. He's got two he's got 20 with an open. So right now it's it's looking like Chad Nelson, Liz Johnson, and Tim Mack are in. So you got those three are in right now. Bowers just threw a big triple. He's on 220 pace now. Yeah, he wants it too. Yeah, he gets, uh, Bowers gets a little excited. Yeah, you can, the last shot he ran out about four lanes, three lanes. Yeah. Which, he which, wants it bad. Which is a good thing in this, and it's a bad thing, too. You, I mean, you, I love the passion and the emotion, but at the same time, you you got to be in it every shot. Yeah. You just, you can't ride you that can't roller coaster. Yeah, and this is just a, just a cut round. It's not like it's yep. getting us there. Yep. But. It's, if it's what fuels him, it's what fuels him, you know? Yeah. Chad Nelson, 204. Yep, Chad Nelson, 204. And he had 211, correct? Yep, plus 15. That is plenty. Big shot for A.J. Chapman right here. He had 180 the first game. Same as Bowers. He's on 212 pace. Good shot. It was a good shot. That's my boy. Get two more right here. You can actually uh, catch him on that, that camera there. But you got you got a couple on yeah. here. Yeah, I got Marshall up in the ninth. Yeah, Marshall. Marshall really needs to get this one right here. There you go. He did. So Chapman's on 220 pace. He's looking to get to plus. With, with nine spare here, Chapman to get to plus one. It's going to be close. Liz finished 219, correct? Liz is your leader. Plus 52. 219. Go back over to Marshall. Marshall can't big double, Chapman. big double. That's going to keep him plus. That's that's going to guarantee, pretty much guarantee him in. He's got one. He's going to have one seventy something now. See Chapman on the left side of your screen there, kicking that big ten shot. out. Big shot. Two thirty two. Or is that just the second That's one? That's second one. He's got a 232 left. He's been telling me to get him three times. He hasn't thrown yet. No, I was looking for Chapman. Oh. Just on the left side of the screen. He was set and stepped off a little while ago. Marshall, eight. Marshall spares that up for 177. That put him plus three. Bowers can shoot. Well, now that changes. 237. Bowers can max for 37. He's got two. He's on 227 pace, which Chapman's around him as of right now. Chapman 232 gets to plus 12. He scores one up. Tim Max fill ball. 
He went through it straight down the middle for 208. 208. So Tim Mack gets to plus three. 13. Or 13. Oh, yeah, plus 13. It's looking like, you know what? Marshall Kent needs to make this spare, and Bowers is going to have to. Bowers is going to be ahead of him. Marshall Kent, 177, is plus five. So Bowers is minus 20, correct? If Bowers goes strike spare, he's plus seven. So he needs nine spare strike. Timmy, you're in. Be. Bowers needs nine spare strike to knock Marshall out. Marshall's the bubble boy right now. Ring oh. 10. Two twenty six. 226, he'll put him at plus six. He'll go around Marshall. Yep, he needs spare strike to go around Marshall. He does. Pin. But ties carry over. Exactly, so. Right. Yeah, but if they tie, spare nine actually, because tie, they both advance. Wow, this is a big 10 pin right here. Yeah, Brent Bowers must and after pick he, this. Yeah, after he left the ten pin, he came back and asked the people if I have enough. He's like, I'm plus. Is that enough? He spared it. Now he needs nine or strike to advance. Yep, nine or strike in the advances. The Marshall Ken is hoping for nine or less. So Liz Johnson advances at plus 52. Plus 15 is Chad Nelson. Plus 13 is Tim Mack. Plus 12 is A.J. Chapman. And right now, Marshall Ken is plus 5. Brent Bowers up. 10th frame, Phil Ball. 9, both Marshall and Brent will advance. A strike here. It'll just be Brent, and Marshall will not advance. Anything less, Marshall Ken is in. Oh, we got it in. Oh, oh and Marshall Ken is out. He didn't really know what was going on. Yeah. 226, Brent Bowers gets the plus six. Marshall Kent will be eliminated at plus five. Also eliminated is Alan Femley, Brett Cunningham, Matt Gasson, and Jackie Carbonetto. There you have it. I'm going to step out for just a second. Yeah, sec. I think I'll we all right will. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back break. with the one game here in just a moment. All right, bowlers have completed their practice throws. It looks like Tim Mack and A.J. Chapman are going to get things underway. It's a one-game elimination match. Top three are going to advance to the finals on Sunday tomorrow evening. The lowest two scores will be eliminated. All ties will advance. Got Mike back in the booth here. Yeah, action underway, huh, guys? Yep. How quick it gets turned around here. One game match. Three are going to make it into the finals. Liz Johnson, Chad Nelson, Tim Mack, A.J. Chapman, and Brent Bowers. All bowling on the same pair. Pattern equality here. They get the bowl on the same pair together. Yeah, we were just talking outside during the break, you know, that it's probably the one perk to having a few less bowlers in the field is that he's able to do this in this round to where if there is a bad pair, because I heard a couple of the guys talk and, you know, we had to choose between 17 and 18, 13 and 14. They drew for the pair, which pair they were going to use that, 
you know, now there is no bad pair. Everybody's bowling on the same pair, so everybody's bowling on the same thing to advance to the finals of the Grand Boot Hill. Yeah, it doesn't give anybody a, an advantage or a disadvantage. Keep everybody happy. It's easy for us to commentate on this as well because it's all on one pair. All eyes are on it. Yep. And uh, uh, worry about missing anything. I give a shout out to Matt McNeil who's watching. Oh, Matt McNeil. <laughs> I heard he dogged me, but I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> You're very politically correct. I got a thing to say to Matt. He doesn't really know who I am, but he, hopefully he'll remember this comment. Uh, I got to ask him. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I got to re remind him about uh, Mike Sapolis and the Sapo won a cookie quote. Hopefully he'll remember that. Laugh about it. An old friend back home. They used to go college together. Kerry <laughs> seems to be all right on this pair. I just saw. Uh, yeah, this is the pair I knocked the five Chad. over like four times yeah, in a row he, last he night. He carried a, a, a Brooklyn. Rob, in those uh, <laughs> pregame interviews that I had with you where I was talking about the way your ball was going through the pins, um, did you take any offense to those comments whatsoever? Oh, not at all. Was I pretty much right, though, about your ball mm -hmm. reaction? Yeah. I, I, I mean, <laughs> I literally probably <laughs> – the goal <laughs> wasn't to strike. I was just no, – when, when right. I – I mean, I was trying to leave someone I could make, and if, if I knocked him over, I knocked him over. And I'm one of the people old enough in the field to remember watching on TV that that was ripping racks back in the day when the five went into the seven. <coughs> I remember bowling at Capri Lanes in Dayton, Ohio at the Junior Masters Tournament back in about 1996. And they got so brutal there in the night block. I was throwing a super beast end over end, flattening it out as much as I could, playing like in between sixth and seventh arrow, backing it into the hole. Or I went like 80 over for five games, which was a huge score. And I left three five eight tens in the pocket that night. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that Bowers missed that five pin, huh? Yeah, he whiffed it right. Well, I believe right now that uh, A.J. Chapman has the best ball reaction of the five competitors. I think so, too. <coughs> I think as long as he keeps the ball inside of 15, he's going to strike yeah. all day long. And that's good because that's my pick. Yeah, I think the, the only thing right now that can get in A.J.'s way is A.J. Uh, yeah. I mean, all the talent in the world uh, throws it great. He's got a good look. Just got to stay calm, stay soft, and make good shots. <laughs> he just completed his freshman year at Wichita this year. That's a good program. Yeah, they're not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's really oh, clean. Oh, that is close. There's that... It's clean though. Yep. <coughs> oh, ball oh. for Tim Mack. All runners advance. <laughs> Oh. 
will take Mac to win because he's got the same hairstyle. Saw the five seven ten. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we got that up right. Yeah, it's all right, makeable. Yeah, if you're gonna miss, you're gonna miss bad. Bear. Right now, four of the five bowlers clean. Yep. Bowers missed five pin, nearly open. Yeah, they are taking three bowlers. Come back to the final tomorrow evening. Nice ball by Liz. Yes, very nice. She left the week 10 on 14, <coughs> throwing almost the same shot there. Yeah, like I said in the last round, Liz isn't going to give you any pins. Oh, you, if you're going to, if you're going to knock Liz out of the finals, you're going to have to beat really Liz. Bull. See if Tim can get the five out. Oh, that was a great Oh, yeah. Time. Made sure he got, some, got a little more hand into that one. Mm -hmm. comes in a little light. Yeah, in my opinion, Brent's kind of just calmed down a little bit. <coughs> you know, stay down in the stay down in his shot, not not get so excited. You know, just just realize you got to stay clean here and runs that spare over. I'm not going to intimidate these these players that are left running shots out and you know getting real excited you just gotta stay in the moment do your thing and yep make good shots yeah what's Liz throwing up there now that's that it's a roto grip wrecker I wrecker. believe gets oh, that nice one throw. a little in yeah jams are in there high flush Let's see if AJ can get back on the horse here yeah we have two players with doubles Liz just got her first double and AJ started double Eight spare, so. That look wide. Yeah. A little quick, a little quick with the feet. Makeable spare, though. Gary Busey. <laughs> Celebrity apprentice, Gary Busey. <laughs> I have a lot of appreciation for Gary Busey. I think he and I can relate with each other a lot. Brent comes in high. There we go. There it is. Good spare. Now remember, the top three from this one game match on this pair, these five bowlers, are going to be in to the big dance tomorrow night at 5.30. First place, $15,000. So big, big news here coming out of Addison, Illinois. We're here at Stardust Bowl. Rob Gotchell in the booth with us. Matt Jurek, Mike Flanagan here. It's the Storm 2013 Grand Boot Hill. This is our first of three qualifiers. 
And the action does not end right now. After uh, this match here, we will take a break. We'll step away. We'll come back. Oh, I would say, what do you think, Rob? Hour and a half for a trio tournament? Yeah. Is it supposed to start at 6.30? I believe so. I believe it'll start a little late. Yeah, I do too. W Woody is generally very on time, but, you know, running the little Calcutta. I believe the Belmont starts at 5.30. Yeah. A lot of horse racing fans up here in Chicago, so they... I believe last year we didn't start the Calcutta until after the race. Really? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I would say we'd start by 7 o'clock. Okay. Hey, did you guys just pick up some static? Uh, no. At all right there? I did not. No. Okay. I'm still trying to work out the bugs here with my wireless system here. I appreciate that. I was getting static through my earpiece, but it had to do with my earpiece, not the okay. mic. Yeah, so. we didn't pick it up. Okay, cool. Tim Mack. Uh -oh. Might have tried to force that one a little after the near rip the rack five seven ten the <laughs> last time on that lane. You know, being a bowler is a hard life. I see Tim's uh, wife Brenda and their daughter. Brenda's got her daughter all wrapped up in her arms and a and a blanket. She's trying to take a nap while Dad's bowling. It's it's not an easy life out here on the road. Not at all, you know. And I mean, we touched on it earlier. It, it's good that Timmy's back in the United States, came back to see his family and stuff. And, you know, for them, it's I'm sure it's equally as good just to come watch him bowl again. It, Brenda was a, I believe, multi-time collegiate All-American at Nebraska. She was. She, when she was in college, she threw it like a guy. It was unbelievable how good she threw it for all five foot three of her. Yeah, I even made mention on Friday night that uh, – you know, she was bowling college when I was in that next tier down when I was an adolescent, a youngster. Yeah. And I, I had a crush on her. Yeah, everybody did. She was. Right? She, Brent is so gorgeous. Oh. Yeah. We used to joke when they first got together that, you know, like Timmy would outkicked his coverage. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> he was the. He was the second best bowler in the family. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, used to, we used to ride him pretty good. <laughs> And that's back when, I mean, Timmy's a legend in, in his own right. That's back when he was in his prime. Oh, man. He was so good. He was a beast. My first high roller, I was 17 years old, 17 or 18, and Timmy was bowling. And I mean, that's back when there was 1,500 bowlers. And when the East Coast bowled the West Coast, it was like, it was like a civil war. <laughs> They're just <laughs> screaming every single shot. D didn't matter if they knew the guy. If it said NY next to your name and CA for, Calif oh, for the California man. guys. Wow. It was just brutal. That was the hardest eight pin I've seen this weekend. It was, that was rough. Yeah, Timmy's going to. Right now he's gonna need a double. He's sitting in four he's sitting in that four spot. Just under two hundred pace. Brent got, kicks out the four. Yeah, four, Brent four. here, he needed that. Yeah. Well, he put himself behind the eight ball in that first frame, missing the five pin. Yeah, I used to play a, a golf game on the PC computer. Whenever you would hit it out of bounds, it would say, it looks like you hit the tree, Jim. <laughs> 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 they called you Jim every time. Looks like you hit the tree, Jim. Some of Woody's patterns, you need your ball to hit a tree. That's a pretty good shot. That is a good one. Nice and tight. Yeah, AJ's got his mom and dad here watching as well. His dad's a huge supporter of his game. Oh. And that's good to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, AJ grew up in Iowa, just, you know, just to the east of me, a, you know, a few hours. And got to see him enough over the last few years grow up and you know, he's really come into his own. Made Junior Team USA a couple years ago. Now he's obviously gone to the powerhouse at Wichita and only getting better. A lot of talent comes out of Iowa. Oh. That's where the field of dreams is, gentlemen. Yeah. Well, that's out. 
He knew it too. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I want to tell you something real quick. I'm going to go to Utah, and I'm going to work with gold certified coach Hank Boomershine, and I'm going to work with Steve Klempkin. And when I, when you see me at the Greater Ozark this year, I'm going to be a far superior bowler. You're gonna you're gonna come up to me and say, Mike, why don't you get out of the booth and why don't you bowl doubles with the IB open? Yeah? Yeah, oh yeah. It's gonna get better. You don't better. throw it bad though. You talk like you throw it bad. You don't throw I it throw bad it like at a, all. I throw it like a donk compared to what I used to. Well Yeah, but you don't get a bowl anymore. Mr. USBC leader in the clubhouse over here is shaking his head, <laughs> oh, yeah, he yeah, throws yeah. it bad. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were gonna have a little spat between him and Aguiar on Friday <laughs> when Aguiar finally realized who he was. <laughs> I've never been in the position you're in, man, but I, I can't I can't imagine having to sweat it out. I mean there there's no tournament in the world that you gotta sit and sweat it out every day. And for somebody that does have the lead to have all these webcasts and <laughs> the ability to look stuff up, yeah. <laughs> it can drive you crazy. Oh. oh. That was a big double by Bowers we just saw. Yeah, that makes Bowers. up for that, for that single pin miss. It's going to put Bowers into fourth now with Timmy splitting unless he can convert the split. Chapman taking control. Bada boom. Tell you what, uh, Chapman's been—he's been here at the Buddha the last two or three years, and he's—he's he's taken his lumps, but you know he—he he learns from the experience and he, he keeps trying to get better, and you know he's putting himself in position here to make the show, make the make the big dance now. Chad's now up. slow with it. <coughs> and he threw the, he threw the last couple out the window and then maybe he just bumped the, right. That are a little protected. Yeah. You know. It's always hard after you whiff the head pin to get up and just let her rip the yeah, next yeah, shot. I have the confidence to make the same shot. <coughs> Liz just plugging along 2-0 pace. So right now, it's Tim Mack, Chad Nelson, and Brent Bowers battling for that third spot. Liz is about eight pins ahead of them, and Chapman's about ten clear, of, about eight clear of Liz. On no, no, he's on two twenty pace now, so he's about twenty clear. Rob, do you are you happy you're sitting up here in the booth and not out here competing against these guys at this moment in time? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd like to be competing, but like I said, you know, coming in after the morning block and knowing we got a trios event tonight, it, I, I just wasn't mentally ready to start qualifying for the main event. So, in my opinion, it was better to sit out. I wanted to come back, watch, see how they're playing the lanes a little bit. You know, see, see what the scoring pace is like. The little tweak to the format is a little different this year, too, so... You just kind of want to see how it all plays out, but as usual, right around 200, it's a good score. Where's your buddy Rick Volhard this weekend? He is actually in Chicago at uh, one of his best friends, Adam Cardwell, who also went to Nebraska. They, uh, it's his bachelor party. It's, he's getting married in Minneapolis in a couple weeks, so bunch of the guys are in downtown Chicago having a bachelor party and they actually went to the Cubs game today. So let's, I, let's met, not call him today because no. he's probably a mess. I, I met uh, Rick <laughs> recently on a trip with you. Um, <laughs> that, that I think he likes to talk to people more than I do. Yeah, and yeah he will say anything and everything. That was at the uh, Fusion in Waterloo, correct? Yeah. Yeah. 
there's definitely no filter. And uh, he's not shy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> AJ's up here on 13. Another strike here will put a he strikes here, big I think gap he's, on. He's locked in. Yeah. He's, I think he's in if he strikes here. <laughs> oh, that's wide. Got oh, it back. Oh, swish him. We call that the old FT where I'm from. Yep. Yeah, the old French tickler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Forgot you use that. Yeah, well, I got one for the, the when you trip the four pin forward. It's called the dirty Scotsman. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. That's a good Damn. shot by Liz. Just walks into the hole. Randy Peterson told me that he had actually used that at nationals with some of his buddies. Really? Yeah, because what were you trying to say? You. Were I was trying to say that. It when sounded I was like it was a mistake when yeah, you well, said Yeah, well, when I was in junior leagues, that's what we called it. Yeah. But it's really, it's got another meaning besides what it is to us that could be offensive. Well, yeah, but, but what's the other bowling term for that hit that everybody uses? Uh, just, oh. just a light tickler. Yeah. yeah. Or a swish zone. People or call that a light tickler or, uh, or you know, uh, hit them thin and watch them spin or... Bucket but crumbler. But in Flanny Land, it's the French tickler. <laughs> well, that's what me and my buddies used to call it back in the day. Oh, man. See, he just didn't stay down in the shot. He's no. running, he was running it out before, before he let go of it. you got to stay down. Tough break there for Chad. He looked online for a little bit and then chopped. That's another adjustment on some of Woody's patterns you got to play in for because your spare ball will pick up a roll. Nice cover there. On the back. Your spare ball can pick up a roll and, and cause some spare shooting issues. So headed into the ninth frame, Tim Mack. Can shoot 207. Letter B there can shoot 235. That is. Matt, Matt can have 205. Matt can have 205. Liz can have 235. Okay, Liz can have 235. Okay. Bowers can have 211. Chapman's pretty much in. He, he can open open for 210. And Chad Nelson can strike out for 194. Wow. AJ's in. That puts him at 240. He may as well just take his shoes off now. Yeah. <coughs> Big shot for Tim Mack right here. Great shot. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. He stuck it too. Jimmy's no stranger to throwing it for the wheat. Yeah, we talked about your W2s. I'd hate to see some of his or 1099s. <laughs> Woody just reminded us that uh, AJ's bowling for youth scholarships. Yes. Before he moves up. Heck, that would pay for almost a whole year. Yeah. At some places. 15000 Yeah, plus, hey, I mean, plus it's already in his smart account, plus what he's yeah. probably getting from the, a little bit from the school. Yeah. This is going to punch her ticket right there. So you no longer need to qualify once you're one of these three bowlers. You're good. Yep. Three people will. 
So well, this is also this is an opportunity for you to sleep in tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You can do whatever you want. You can go shopping in the morning. You can go do whatever you Play want. Play golf. Timmy, Timmy, go spend some time with his family. Yeah. In they Chicago. could head. They could head down to the Cracker Barrel. Yeah. <laughs> get themselves a <laughs> couple of grilled cheese and some soup. No pancakes. Cracker Barrel, of all places. That's pretty good. Get up. Oh, oh. he wanted it. Oh yeah. Got to want it out here. One gal. So a lot of things can happen here, but it's three bowlers looking for one spot. So Liz Johnson is, she's in, right? Well, she she technically still needs a mark. Okay. Big shot for Bowers. He's he's in control of his own destiny. Oh. Tim Mack with this strike can put Bowers and Chad Nelson on the outside. Liz would, ju Liz would just need a mark, and it near cut would be A.J., Liz, and Tim. Dead silent in here right now. It's real quiet. A little wide. Got it back. Wow. Very impressive. That is going to. Because if he'd have gone nine, nine spare nine. there, we had possibilities of a tie oh, all over the place. Yeah, and when he's essentially behind everybody in count. So right now, as Barney stays behind the foul line, Tim Mack is in with 200. Liz Johnson needs to mark to shut out Chad Nelson, who can max for 194. Two old four for Tim Mack. Moves the plus 17. I know pins don't count anymore. Liz just needs good count, right? No, well, no, because technically nine hours. Oh, no, she would be in. Yeah, it's over. It's over. She just needs good count. Because she has one. She has 203. Yeah. 202 and nine hours. Behind the foul line. It's the one, three, yeah. nine. That's, she's in. So A.J. Chapman's going to make it in. Tim Mack is going to make it in. And, and Liz, Liz Johnson. Johnson. All Brink can get to is... is 186, and all Chad can get to is 194. So, Chad Nelson and Brent Bowers have to re-enter tomorrow. But they each get $400. They do. So essentially, they've earned a free re-entry plus a little dinner money. So there you have it. Liz Johnson continues to have a great weekend here. Always got to root for the ladies, and Liz is one we always root for. Really impressive outing here by A.J. Chapman. At 251. As you said, he's put in his time. He's cut his teeth out here the last couple of years, and he's going to have a chance tomorrow to take home $15,000 in scholarship for his school. Two twelve for Liz. AJ's mom and dad are here. They're very proud of him. It's about 5.30 here our time. I doubt we'll be back until every bit of 7 o'clock here this evening. Do you know how many teams we have tonight? Is it 20? He said about 20. He thinks he's, he's estimating 20. So we got a strip and oil. Run a Calcutta. With the Monopoly dollars, yep. yes. Sorry, sh should I not be referencing For fun. That? I mean, yeah, it's going to be a fun thing that we're doing. All right. Giving away bowling balls and prizes and coffee makers and teacups. I'll get, we'll give away an autographed Tim Mac jersey tonight on the webcast. Yeah, we could do that. Team Bow Rain. Yeah. You're our hero, Tim. Hey, Tim, real quick. 
What was it like striking out there, man? You 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 got the last one a little, or the second shot in the tenth a little wide. But uh, what's it feel like to be in for tomorrow? It feels great, obviously. Uh, you know, I I felt if I can throw it clean, the right lane was really good for me. I thought I had a little bit more hook spot, uh, and I thought if I threw it clean, it just gave it a chance. You know, good things will happen. And uh, I actually was really pleased with where I threw it and how I threw it. I didn't want to I didn't want to pinch it and miss it left. I wanted to be clean and be open and give it a chance and. You know, the IQ Tour seems to be the ball for me right now so far in every pattern. So it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it, really. That seems to be the ball this weekend. I would like for you to explain to the folks at home what was going through your mind when you left that blower eight on lane 14. Just patience. You know, uh, you, you know that it's not If you looked at my reaction, just it was really, uh, <laughs> what can you do? It happens to everybody in bowling. You know, uh, people bring 10, they blow her seven, they, you know, they solid eight, they solid nine. And uh, for me, I just stay patient. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of bowling left still, so I feel like if uh, I give myself a chance down the stretch, you know, I've been bowling. I've been bowling some games recently, so I'm getting a little sharper. So I felt like I give myself a chance. You know, we'll see what happens. Last question: Since you don't have to re-enter tomorrow, you and the family gonna go do something special? Yeah, I don't know what time we bowl tomorrow, but it's been nice to have my my wife and daughter here, uh, and uh, it looks like Rob told me we bowl at four, so uh, I'm gonna get a little time to spend by the pool. I was in the pool this morning with her. Doing cannonballs, and it's been really uh, actually it's been really nice to <laughs> spend some time with my wife and daughter after being two years in the in the Middle East with uh, the national team of Bahrain. Uh, who I miss those guys, but um, you know we'll see what the next challenge is for me. Good luck to you, man. Thanks, man. Thanks very much. Good bowling, Timmy. Thanks, man. All right, there you have it. That's Tim Mack. And with that, that's going to conclude uh, our broadcast from our first qualifier for the Grand Boot Hill. And uh, we will be having the trio here uh, in about an hour and a half. We'll be back with you. We want to thank you for joining us. We want to thank Rob Gottschall for being with us as well. Yeah. Rob, it's always a pleasure having you here. Thanks, guys. I love sitting here with you. It was good. Looking for it's the fun. three-peat here. We're going to give her a shot, man. And we hope you do. We'll be cheering for you, as always. Thank Matt you. Turek, thank you for all your hard work today as well. Thank you, Mike. And you uh, we're not done yet. We'll nope. be back for our third leg of this deal here. It's going to be the trio tournament, some team action tonight. It'll be exciting. It'll be fun. We want you to join us here about an hour and a half. We'll be back. On behalf of the entire team here, the folks here at Stardust Bowl, and, of course, Woody Demma and his great tournament staff, we will be back here in about an hour and a half, live in Addison, Illinois, at the 2013 Storm Grand Boot Hill Weekend.